exchanging glances, wondering in the night. Tick tock, time to rock. Oh, wait, we are live. Oh, we are live. Oh, no, everybody. Heard good evening, this. good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here, D Wood. And with me now, guys, let's have you introduce yourselves. Uh, one, who are you according to people who like you? And two, who are you according to the jihadis who want to murder you? Robert. I am Robert Spencer. I wrote the critical Quran. I wrote the Palestinian delusion all about what's going on now. Only I wrote it before it happened in Israel. And uh, what do jihadis think? Well, I guess they think I'm a Kafir, man. That's pretty good. They want to kill. That's a good thing to be. Yes, indeed. All right. Now, AP, who are you according to uh friends and foes i am apostate prophet also known as ap i wrote a bunch of tweets uh earlier today <laughs> <laughs> and did you yeah, i didn't I, see them yeah i did i think i saw um, one of them yes um i'm i'm an ex-muslim who has left islam and i have a youtube channel and uh, according to the ones who are protectors of the Islamic faith, who keep it from crumbling because it is very weak and it is like it gets harmed very easily if we say something bad about it. According to them, I am a, um, I am a, a I'm a rat, a disbeliever, apostate to be killed. But according to others, like Mohammed Tijab said, I'm uh, one of the greatest Islamophobes of our time or mm -hmm. Islam, anti-Islam apologetics of our, apologists of our time. Mm -hmm. uh, others said, Farid said, no one can end apostate prophet. He doesn't lie. Um, I don't know. I have, I have some of these uh, these quotes collected. I can hang them on my wall, maybe. When... You mentioned Farid. I think Farid called me something like the, the greatest Islamophobe in the world or something. It was like a, kind of an awesome oh. compliment. Oh, um, nice. Because there's plenty, plenty of Islamophobes out there. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, up uh, before we before we jump into our topic, Desert Empire said, uh, "Robert, I'm excited for your new book in November." What's what's that about, Robert? Well, David, it's called Empire of God. <laughs> I didn't plan this. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> perfect though. <laughs> Empire of God: How the Byzantines Saved Civilization. This is a history of the what is known as the Byzantine Empire, or the Eastern Roman Empire. It's really just the Roman Empire and uh, how there are so many aspects of Western civilization, free civilization, the free world that we owe to the Eastern Romans or Byzantines, notably 800 years of resistance to jihad violence, such as we have seen in Israel over the last few days. If the Roman Empire had not been standing between Europe and the jihadis, there would be no Europe as we know it today, and there would be no Western civilization at all. It would all have been overwhelmed and would be just like Jordan or Syria or Iraq or Iran today. The book, Empire of God, How the Byzantines Saved Civilization, available now for pre-order and coming November 21st to any bookstore near you. And, uh, Oh, go ahead, AP. Is it better than the Quran? Oh, of course, because it tells the truth, AP. <laughs> and so uh, I, I wrote uh, last year, I don't have it to hold up, but I wrote uh, the critical Quran, which is an honest translation of the Quran, plus commentary to show how it is understood in mainstream Islam and also difficulties with the text, various difficulties that uh, cause trouble for standard islamic belief and the critical quran i got to tell you is full of lies but the lies are not written by me the lies come from allah and muhammad and i just point them out in the critical quran but empire of god like all my other books has no lies in it alhamdulillah a quick question do you do audio books for your books and if I did, not actually uh i did do the I, audio I, I... book for the history oh, yeah. of jihad from Muhammad to ISIS, which okay. is also available now, that is an audiobook you can get 
with me myself reading the text. However, there are actually other audiobooks of my various books. Uh, 27 now. Get them all. Collect them. Trade them. Get the whole set. 27 Spencer books. And well, Robert, many Robert. of them are available in audio. I only have voiced one of them. The others are actually voiced by competent audiobook narrators. But I nominate Robert, myself with my soothing voice. As he does have a soothing said. voice. But yeah. Robert, are, are, are your uh, collectible books as cool as uh, Trump trading cards? <laughs> oh, they're far cooler than Trump trading cards. <laughs> because Trump trading cards are so expensive. But you can get the history of jihad or empire of God or the Palestinian delusion for just pennies or wow. maybe a few bucks. Quite a bargain. But nothing, nothing like what Trump trading cards cost you. All right, couple of a uh, couple of more super chats here before we jump into the discussion. Uh, Cult says, uh, Robert, do you have any? Do you have a recommendation on hadith translations and commentaries for someone who wants to learn more about Islam? You actually don't have a lot of choices when it comes to hadith That's translations. Right. Yeah, um, the but... best thing to do, though, is to I have all the books behind me on the shelf. And uh, that was a waste of money because now Sunnah.com and thank you, Sunnah.com. You can send me my 15 percent, you know, the address. But uh, Sunnah.com uh, has it all searchable and readily available. And so don't waste your money buying the translations. They're all there. Very easy to use. Sunnah.com, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. And I'm and you do have, yeah, and there are, uh, they do, uh, they do mess around with their hadiths um, yes. sometimes to cover up some meanings or to add some, uh, add some of their own views to them and so on. But in general, you get a pretty good idea about, uh, about Sunni yeah, when, Islam. From when you guys started, uh, started calling attention to the hadiths in which Muhammad is kissing the little boy. Yeah, sucking uh, on his now, tongue. Yeah, now they're all changed to, yeah, oh, they he change put them. his mouth on his. Oh, yeah, and awesome. uh, the same thing with um, Muhammad, uh, the, the, the old version, when they originally translated it for themselves, it was Aisha said, uh, he struck me on my chest, which caused me pain. So he hit her. Mm -hmm. uh, now it says he gave me a shove, right? So, uh, and it's based on us criticizing. We start criticizing something and then they, they, change, their, uh, they change their translation yeah. so that when people look it up, uh, we look like we're making stuff up. Why? AP, I have mixed feelings here. One, I kind of like it when that thing was up in front of your face. Um, but two, well. <laughs> but as far as commentary on the Hadith goes for the, for the last guy, uh, watch for my next book coming next year, Muhammad, a critical biography, where I will evaluate numerous Hadith primarily regarding Muhammad's life, comparing different versions to one another, and uh, investigating how they, the different variants could have come about, showing that there is not a single standard narrative, even of Muhammad's life, in the Islamic literature, which most Muslims have no idea about. This book is going to blow a lot of minds, ladies and gentlemen. Muhammad, oh, a critical man. biography, next year. And uh, El, El Quran Hubbard, <laughs> El Quran <laughs> Hubbard says... So glad Islam is getting the rightful blame for these Hamas attacks. Finally, may more awaken to the true nature of Islam. And it, it is amazing with this situation where uh, you have guys just like going in and randomly killing women and children and, you know, the Muslims of the world celebrating and saying, what kind of monster wouldn't be celebrating right now? And so we are getting a little taste of it. But guys, uh, uh, before we jump in, we want to we want to go through some of the Jordan Peterson tweets and some of the responses to him. We actually have some video responses to this. But uh, for anyone who hasn't been paying attention, what's been going on for for the past two days? Well, what's been going on is a full scale war, a full scale war started on Saturday. And uh, Israel, actually, for the first time since 1973, has declared war. Interestingly enough, it did not name exactly who it's going to war against, but it's very clear that this is going to be a larger operation against Hamas unless Israel is stopped uh, than we have seen before. And what happened was uh, at, at the, the latest count, I think is 700 Israelis were killed and many others were wounded. This has never happened before. It's on the scale. There's never been this many Jews killed in one day since the Holocaust. 
and there has never been the, an attack of this magnitude in Israel, the proportionate would be about 20 or 30,000 people being killed in the United States in a single day. And so it's a massive attack that took place on Saturday. Uh, Hamas had people paragliding over the border. They bulldozed the fence between Gaza and Israel and uh, murdered people wholesale at a peace concert that was taking place right by the border. And uh, many people, many women were kidnapped uh, in the manner of ISIS, Boko Haram and others. The uh, jihadis were acting upon the Quran's verses regarding the captives of the right hand and taking them for purposes of rape. The uh, people were killed in their homes and is, uh, jihadis got onto the streets of Israel and were just killing anybody they saw, as in kill them wherever you find them. Everything proceeded according to Quranic imperatives. And uh, there are people cheering this all over the world now because they have been so conditioned to think of Israel as an oppressor which is actually part of a very sophisticated and long-standing propaganda campaign to create and exaggerate human rights abuses on the part of Israel. It's all part of what Muhammad would say, war is deceit. And now that is bearing bitter fruit. Anything to add to that, AP? I just have a few questions to Robert before we actually go into this. Um, just um, a few things on my mind. So first off, in the morning, I think um, news came in that uh, Hezbollah uh, participated in actually uh, bombing and targeting um, Israeli uh, military into Israeli points or firing into Israel. So it looks like um, there was a fear of, of escalation um, of the conflict, which would involve uh, Hezbollah and Lebanon. But it looks like throughout the day today, it, it kind of calmed down a little bit. So right now, uh, there is not much fighting going on on that front. But that also brings um, something else to mind, which is that uh, we talked a lot yesterday with David about how um, Hamas would be stupid to think that they can actually win such a war against Israel. Uh, and they must be they must be insane if they actually believe they could win this war. But uh, could it be that there is something much more sinister at play here, which is that um, people have been paranoid and worried about uh, the world and uh, you know, wars, the whole Ukraine, Russia issue. Uh, people have been speculating about, uh, I don't know, Taiwan, um, things leading to a world war. And uh, if, if, we, if we remember the, the world wars, the previous ones, they, 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 they didn't just start out with, with a, as a giant war. They, through accumulations of smaller conflicts, they developed into, an, into, a, into a huge global war. Could it be that uh, that Hamas is trying to take advantage of the global fear and paranoia and and start a major world war so that all the other Muslim countries would also participate and they could together take out Israel? What do that you think? could happen. No doubt about it. That could happen. It's it, it has to be understood in the first place that the uh, it's not just Hamas. This is a war already. Uh, although it's not declared as such, but the real conflict here is between the Islamic Republic of Iran and Israel, because Iran is the chief financier of Hamas. Iran also funds Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah. And Hezbollah is only not more involved because they started later. The Israelis were not caught by surprise, and they were able to stop their advance in northern Israel. But the... Uh, Palestinian, the, the Palestinians are essentially the arm of Iran fighting Israel right now. Now, Iran itself may indeed get involved directly at some point, and uh, the thing could escalate into a world war. That is a real possibility. Also, it has to be said that it's only happening now because of the perceived weakness of the United States. Yeah, uh, yeah. That the, the president is, is, is senile and self-destructive and has just, uh, as a matter of fact, on Friday, remember the conflict started on Saturday. On Friday, the Biden administration sent $75 million under the table to the Palestinians. 
Now, I don't mean to make this into a political thing, but the fact is that Trump had stopped USAID to the Palestinians because they kept on supporting terrorists. They have the what's called the pay for slay program where they pay the families of imprisoned terrorists and pay the imprisoned terrorists themselves, pay the families of slain terrorists as well. And they uh, Trump put them on notice that you either stop paying the terrorists or you get no more money from the U.S. And they said, we're going to keep paying the terrorists till we pay our last penny. So Trump said, OK, no more money for the Palestinians. Biden set the money going again. So they've had millions of dollars they wouldn't have had otherwise that they got because of Biden. Also, Biden just weeks ago gave six billion dollars to Iran in exchange for five American hostages. It was actually an even worse trade than that. It was $6 billion and five Iranians who were in prison in the United States, three of whom declined to go back to Iran, interestingly enough, in exchange for five Americans who were held hostage in the in Iran. So that's only going to be- frozen funds though, right? So that, that was uh, an unfreezing of, yeah. of the frozen Yeah, that was, not, that was not American money. I'm not saying it was taxpayer money, but it was money that only went to Iran because of this deal. And mm -hmm. so they had six billion dollars that they wouldn't have had otherwise in order to finance this jihad against Israel. Mm -hmm. And so this is all happening because the U.S. has brought it about. And it's ultimately the 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 responsibility of the Biden administration. At the same time, they're ostensibly on the side of Israel and could get drawn into a wider conflict should things escalate. Yeah. All right. Now, Robert, um... We want to go through some uh, Jordan Peterson tweets, but I, 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 I'm liking this Peterson situation because he's a perfect example of something that keeps happening over and over and over again. You have people who don't know much about Islam, and then they get the idea in their heads, hey, it'd be great to build some bridges here. And so let's have a discussion. Let's get some of these guys on to have a discussion so we can build some bridges. And then they hear what the people's actual views are and they go, whoa, that doesn't sound like any that doesn't sound like any that doesn't sound anything like my Muslim what my Muslim friends said. This sounds so very did, different. Uh, this, hmm? Oh, so so, so what did, did, Jordan Peterson got the idea a while back. Hey, he's going to have uh uh, Muhammad Hijab on his channel to talk about Islam and so on. He even had this moment where he apologized for calling Muhammad a warlord in the past, even though if anyone in history is a warlord, Muhammad was. Um, but he uh, he apologized, was sorry for saying that and so on. And then all of this to build bridges. And Michaela Peterson, so his daughter, had Muhammad Hijab on with Ayan Hirsi Ali. And uh, then uh, she had a discussion with AP and AP is actually putting like these guys, this, you know, the same guys who are uh, who are uh, celebrating that she had Muhammad Hijab on her channel. AP is showing them, look what this guy says. This guy says apostate should be killed. Look, look at what Muhammad Hijab he here says. He says that, uh, uh, you know, deep down, Western Western women who criticize Islam actually want to be raped. They're waiting to be conquered and raped and so on. And uh, so she's all horrified. She anyway, was shocked. <laughs> yeah. All, so all of a sudden, all these people who didn't know anything about Islam are horrified by it. Right. They're horrified by it. We keep seeing this. Uh, we, we got a little bit of that on the uh, on the PBD podcast where uh, Patrick thinks he's having uh, having some guys on to, hey, let's get the differences out of the way and then we can move on to discussing our united front against LGBTQ stuff. And then wait a minute, one side of this discussion wants to brutally murder the other side. This is a problem. Let's talk about Dylan Mulvaney here. Uh, <laughs> and so, but this so keep, what? yeah, this this keeps happening over and over again, and it's really interesting because you do have Muslims who there are plenty of Muslims in the world who don't want to execute people and who don't want to kill people and who would love to build bridges and all this. But when when one of these uh, people with the big podcast say, "Hey, who should I get?" the people that the person that gets pushed forward is someone like Muhammad Hijab or Daniel Hakikachu, one of the world's lead, possibly the world's leading defender of child marriage and pedophilia. Uh, and they keep pushing these guys forward. Hey, get this guy on, get this guy on. And then everyone's like, whoa, that's what these guys believe. I thought the Islamophobes were lying when they said these guys believe that. And they, wait, these guys actually believe this stuff? And so the, uh, the, the, the you've got these pod these podcasts are trying to build bridges and then the jihadis do what they do. They blow up the bridges. Um, 
to be fair, David, I want to I want to add something to, uh, for for your correction and clarification there. To be fair, uh, I myself am also one of the main supporters of Daniel Kikichu and one of the main Me people who push, who push Daniel Kikichu and to recommend him left and right. I we made are. him popular. I recommended him to, to to other people. So Dream I take team. credit for that as well. And, Dream and team. I'm still proud of that. I'm proud of that. Yeah. He is. Who is he? <laughs> If you go back, if you go back to the original uh, dream team, the the U.S. Uh, the USA when they finally got to send their professional basketball players over, yeah, uh, he's uh, Daniel is the Charles Bark, the Charles Barkley of the dream team. Um, I gotta say, Muhammad Hijab is the is the Jordan man, the Jordan. Uh, they both defend they both defend child marriage and so on, but uh, yeah. Hijab just got that certain something that makes him the most dominant at blowing up the bridges that these guys are trying to build. All right. I don't know. I I think he's so so much of a blower up of bridges. I, I'm starting to think Daniel Hakikaju is the Ali G of the Dawagandists. He's oh. he's he's a he's a Fed who's trying to make Islam look bad. And so I, he's pretending to uh That's a strong to, theory. To I'm not even I'm not even it. joking. I don't believe that's the case, but sometimes I'm like, this is so stupid. What he just did was so yeah. stupid. It seems it seems deliberate. So yeah, that, that thought does keep uh <laughs> keep popping into my my mind. Um uh, <laughs> Swiss apologetics here said Ich trage Lederhosen, das ist mein Jihad, was ist euer Jihad? <laughs> you know, David, now that now that you're doing the, the voices, I gotta hear what Jordan Peterson said. I've been waiting all day thinking, oh great, oh, no. we're gonna talk about Jordan Peterson tonight. I'm gonna hear Jordan Peterson say it himself. Oh yeah. Well, uh, well you what, know what did he say? Yeah. Exactly. I do, I don't hey. buy your Allah. Hey, Netanyahu. Oh, I should have got that clip ready of him. Uh, I don't buy your Allah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I can't tell if he doesn't know how to pronounce it or AP. We've talked about this before where like it, it's a it, it's 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 a strat mispronouncing someone's name is a strategy to show that you, you're they're totally off your radar and I don't even care about it. So I wonder that with the your Allah, <laughs> like if he's yeah, like, well, he's I don't even know the name. Of, I don't even know the name of your God. Hmm? He's Canadian, so yeah, that's true. I don't like your Allah, eh? <laughs> he doesn't care about the pronunciation. He just he just does it. Yeah. I like Tim Hortons way better, eh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> chugging gallons of maple syrup um <laughs> hey uh, can i before... make a very quick comment before we go on because somebody in the comment section said and this comes up occasionally said mm -hmm. um remember that we talk about uh, palestinians and we talk about the gazans that not all of them agree with hamas not, not all of them hate israel and that's so true on. true there are a few there are there is a handful there there are a few uh palestinians who do not agree but what also needs to be rem remembered is that hamas is not just some organization that randomly took over uh the gaza strip uh against the will of the palestinians and now uh, commits all of this violence in the most recent polls uh, uh which with Washington, Washington Institute had a poll on uh, what Palestinians think and what, what the Gaza Strip thinks. The Gaza Strip is still mostly in favor of Hamas. They still think that Hamas is the best representative. And uh, among the solutions, should we go to a two-state solution or should we conquer all of Israel, all of uh, Palestine, uh, the, the, the most popular option is still to eradicate Israel and to uh, conquer all of Palestine. So um, this is not it's some unpopular idea and the alternatives uh the, the very alternative peaceful options are not very popular ones they they won an election they run they run yep. gaza because they won an election with 75 percent of the vote so mm -hmm. it's not as if uh hamas is unpopular there not by yeah. any stretch of the imagination yeah. Yeah. yeah uh and christian hijab here says so heartbroken for all the women and children being held captive reminds me of the yazidis being held captive because of muhammad's teaching yeah and i have seen some of the uh, people pointing out the um the parallels between isis and what hamas have been doing why every time we talk about women and children being held captive ap starts cracking up <laughs> hilariously like some sick Nothing Sick, to do horrible. with that. People call me a psycho. I have absorbed how to behave <laughs> appropriately in various circumstances. AP hasn't at all. You're a sick dude, be, AP. Uh, to, no, I was, I'm just laughing because uh, I lost a comment, but somebody in the comments said, uh, my 
autistic bag keeps saying alhamdulillah randomly thanks to ap because i because i keep doing that <laughs> on streams so. yeah That's robert eight as far as the uh, as far as the uh you know the w women and children and stuff me and ap were talking about this yesterday about uh how like even like keyboard jihadis when they're harassing us they harass us in one way they'll they'll threaten us they'll call us islamophobes and so on but the women get harassed in a in a different way they understand there's a different oh, yeah. way to come at the, so all the same things they do to us they'll do to the women but they'll also harass the women in additional ways um but that's dialed up massively if they're actually captives the way you know uh, a, a you know if they capture a man you know they're going to beat him they're going to you know they might torture him and stuff like that the things they do to a woman uh completely different like i don't have any daughters but if if if, if captives were going to say hey we we're going to take your daughter we're going to take all your sons i would say take all my sons uh, i wouldn't want i wouldn't want that to happen but uh it's that's that's how messed up it is when when we know what they're going to do to to women i really want to contain myself when i talk about uh how muslims feel toward uh, how muslims treat women but um well why don't you contain yourself for once it's your channel anyway so i don't really care if it's controversial um uh no the the issue is that um i'm, I'm sorry but it's simply the truth the muslim world is there, there is a huge sickness. It's a very disturbing sickness when it comes to women, when it comes to sex, where, uh, where in the Muslim population, especially the male population, uh, is to a very, very large extent so deprived of uh, their satisfaction and so depraved in that regard that um, that, that, that it is very common among them to uh, immediately turn toward attacking women or making something, uh, making it all about sex, making it all about forced sex, about uh, possession of your wife and your mother and your children, your daughters and this and that. Uh, it's it's very popular. It's extremely popular. We have seen it all the time with the apologists as well that we uh, that, that we discuss, that we debate, that we uh, engage with. Daniel Kikachu just called uh, uh, Jordan Peterson a prostitute and they immediately started making jokes about her, about his daughter, uh, sex references, capture and rape references. Mohammed Hijab frequently uh, calls people prostitutes, whores. He said, uh, he basically implied that Muslims should come together and uh, rape my wife and that anti-Muslim women basically want to be secretly captured and raped and don't forget the, the golden showers the golden showers yeah. golden showers yeah, yeah. we've got golden we've got endless block, messages yeah. of of him saying get on your knees sir david one can give you a golden shower and he's got stuff on there that we have to actually look up because we don't know yeah, like yeah. what some of this stuff means yeah. um but he does so apparently he's quite familiar with it uh also ap al along those same lines um thaddeus over on his channel reasoned answers he'll have uh shows where people can just uh like join him live and it's just this ongoing problem where they'll keep posting porn as soon as they'll, they'll join him live and they'll ha 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 so he had a, he has a show on a delay specifically because people just the uh the his his muslims who are trying to jump in are just instantly start trying to post porn on his site but there is <laughs> some weird weird stuff man this is weird stuff um Let's see. We, we talked a little bit about this yesterday. David the Goliath says Islam's holy sites are based on fake lies. Abraham's bogus imaginary trip to Mecca and Muhammad's fake trip to Jerusalem. Uh, Robert, you weren't there, but last night we were talking about how, how funny this is. It's the same approach that Muhammad had with like Aisha. Oh, I had a dream. I had a dream. God was giving me your daughter. Give me your daughter because God gave her, gave her to me. But it's the same thing with like, oh, oh, yeah, you have this uh, pagan center of worship. It's the Kaaba. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Abraham's first. Yeah, yeah. Abraham did that. So uh, you got to give it to me now. Uh, oh, you know, hey, I, I had a dream. I, I had a dream. I flew, to, I flew to Jerusalem on a magic flying donkey monster. So that's mine, too, now. And it's just like, seriously, I could just say, oh, I, you know. I had a dream. Elon's bank account is mine. And then he has to like give it to me or something. It's so weird. I don't know. Anyway, um, Robert, before we, uh, just one more thing before we go through Jordan's tweets, why don't you give us in a nutshell and we can unpack this as uh, some issues come up. Uh, what's the short version of the background with the Palestinian uh, conflict? Because uh, I was watching a video on the Dean show where they were saying up until... Zionism 
Jews and Muslims were like, we're besties, man, for, for yeah. 13 centuries. And then yeah. Zionism came along. So we don't want to go too long on this, but it's, it's good if everyone has a, a basic framework of, of what the situation is here. Yeah, historically, archaeologically, uh, by numerous historical records, it's clear that the Jews were in that area from time immemorial. And what people don't know is they never left. What happened was this, in 134 AD, there was a Messiah, Bar Kokhba, and he was a leader of the Jews. He was obviously not the Messiah and he lost. And the Romans had had enough by then of the constant revolts against their rule. And so they expelled the Jews from the area and they renamed Judea and Samaria, Palestine. They got the word Palestine from the Bible. It was the name Philistine the, of the enemies of the Israelites in the Bible. But there was no historical connection between anybody in the area and the actual Philistines. So uh, that's something that the Palestinians claim today. It's false. Uh, there were never, there was never, even after the Romans renamed the area Palestine, there was, <coughs> excuse me, there was never, there were never any Palestinians. You see, Allah's <laughs> curse, Allah's curse. <laughs> no. Just for anyone who didn't follow, uh, 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 Robert had pneumonia a little while back and has still been uh, slowly recovering. So, uh, it's you see. But I have to say, Ali Dawa did pay, did pray, did have uh, his thousands and thousands of uh, fans praying for us to get diseases. And lo and behold, Robert got pneumonia a couple of years later. So it's the proof. A couple years later. Yes. It's the proof. Wow. So <laughs> now you're going to make me forget. Uh, where were we? The Palestinians. There were never any Palestinians, David. They. It's like Staten Island, you know. There, there's this place, Staten Island. And it's the name of an of, of an area, but there is no nationality, Staten Islander, Staten Islanders. There is no separate nation that has ever been there. It's just the name of an area, and that's what Palestine was all these years. Even if you go to 1948, when Israel was founded, you look at the newspapers of the day. You look at the United Nations deliberations. You look at the uh, Declaration of Independence of the State of Israel. You look at the opposing states that wanted to destroy Israel and went to war with it in 1948. There is not one mention of Palestinians. And so everybody talks about how this is Palestinian land. There weren't even any Palestinians until the 1960s. They were invented in the 1960s. The KGB... And Yasser Arafat invented the Palestinians in the 1960s because in those days, the world was on Israel's side. And all of global public opinion thought that Israel was this tiny underdog, courageous, tiny little state facing 22 hostile Arab states that all wanted to destroy it. And not to mention the non-Arab Muslim states that wanted to destroy it, like Iran. Pakistan and all the rest. And so you, they what they did was, in order to manipulate global public opinion, created the Palestinian Liberation Organization and started talking about the Palestinians who were an even smaller people who were being oppressed by the terrible Israelis. And it's worked wonderfully. Jimmy Carter then strong-armed uh, Menachem Begin, the Prime Minister of Israel, to accept the existence of a people called the Palestinians in the 70s. And in the 90s, at the Oslo Accords, Bill Clinton got the Israelis to agree to accept in principle that a Palestinian state would be created. But the idea that this is occupied territory would have to mean that it was originally somebody else's territory. That is not true either. The fact is that the Ottoman Empire, from which AP and I come, that that fell in the time of World War I, right after World War I. And one of the last things the Ottoman Empire did was cede the territory that is now Israel to the League of Nations, the precursor to the United Nations. The League of Nations then gave it to Britain in order for Britain to create a Jewish national home 
And that was actually the purpose that the League of Nations gave this land to Britain, because it was understood that this is before the Holocaust, mind you. This is after World War I, not after World War II. And after World War I, the uh, idea was that the Jews would be allowed to settle in this area because it was their ancient homeland. And there had always been a Jewish presence, even after the Romans expelled them and renamed the place Palestine. There are some Jews who never left. And so the idea that the Arabs had this land or Palestinians had this land, these are historical fictions. The Arabs had it back in the seventh century when they conquered it. And then the Ottomans conquered it from them. And they're Turks, not Arabs. And that was who it was ruled by, but the Ottomans gave it up. So if you want to ask who was the occupier, I mean, who, who owned the land that the Israelis are illegally occupying? Nobody does except Israel. The mandate for Palestine that the League of Nations gave to Britain was actually made up of what is today Israel, what is today Jordan. And then the British, because they hated the, they actually hated the Jews, they took the whole eastern part of it that is now Jordan and gave it to the Arabs to placate the Arabs. And then the western part was supposed to be the Jewish national home. That's Israel, including Gaza, including what is called the West Bank, which is the heart of the Jewish homeland, Judea and Samaria. And this was, therefore, the land that according to international law, because the League of Nations went into the United Nations, and this is universally recognized, that land belongs to Israel by right. It's not occupied territory. And um, there's no Palestinian people that ever existed there or ever had a kingdom or a republic or an empire there, and they have no claim on it. Now, I'm uh, unfamiliar with uh, some of what you just said. Uh, so uh, for anyone who's confused right now, Robert, there are actually people in the Gaza Strip and in the West Bank. There's a bunch of people there. So yeah. those, pe those people are called Palestinians. Who, right. who, who, were, who, were, who were they actually? You're just saying they were like just like random people, part of, the, uh, part of the Ottoman Empire or something like that? Yeah, in the Ottoman Empire, they were known as South Syrians. And that was South Syria, the, the whole area there. Uh, they're Arabs. They are not ethnically linguistically, culturally, or religiously different from the Arabs of Syria or Jordan. They're just more Arabs of that area. There's May not a separate Palestinian so, so, Arab nationality. What, one, sec one second, AP, because we obviously both have, uh, both have questions here, but a, a quick follow-up on that one. So, um, so, Robert, you're saying that the identity of a Palestinian people was made because if if you were just if you're just hey part of a bigger group that is in multiple countries you can say hey well you know you should be absorbed by those countries that's who you are mm -hmm. therefore to avoid that and to make sure that there's this ongoing local conflict you have to say no mm -hmm. these are a specific people group uh who yeah. who have this territory and were pushed off their land by jews and therefore they're freedom fighters getting it back yeah, there's plenty more that can be said about this. In the first place, they weren't pushed off their land. And so I think we should cover that first. But I mean, there's so much more to this, David. But there's one thing that this this is something that's often said, that people think that the, the Jews came in and uh, seized the land and kicked out the Arabs. This did not happen. What happened was there was the Zionist movement that increased the Jewish presence in this area. But this was not something that was done in, this was actually done with the Jews coming in and buying territory that was sold to them in, on a legitimate basis. And then the Arabs launched numerous pogroms to massacre the Jews and frighten them into leaving, and they didn't leave. And then what happened was when Israel was declared a state, the Arab higher committee told the Arabs to leave the area so that they would be able to kill all the Jews, destroy Israel, and the Arabs would not be in the line of fire, and then they could come back once Israel was destroyed. You doubt this? I got it all in here. 
I've got documented evidence of the Arab Higher Committee in 1948 urging the Arabs to leave in a Jordanian daily called Palestine, Palestine, in 1949, says the Arab state encouraged the Palestine Arabs to leave their homes temporarily in order to be out of the way of the Arab invasion armies. Notice that it says Palestine Arabs, not Palestinian Arabs, because there were no Palestinians yet. Uh, Arab Higher Committee, it must not be forgotten, the Near East Arabic Broadcasting Station, uh, that is, 1949, it must not be forgotten that the Arab Higher Committee encouraged the refugees' flight from their homes in Yaffa, Haifa, and Jerusalem. On and on and on. There's so much documentation of that. It's completely obscured by this myth that the Jews kicked out the Arabs. They left voluntarily because they thought Israel would be destroyed quickly. So just, can, just... I, can I add one, one thing to that very quickly? I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Robert talked about the displacement of the, of the Palestinian Arabs. And there is one event that, uh, that they often refer to, which is known as the, the, the Nakba, the catastrophe uh, of, of Palestinians or Arabs being displaced from the region um, a displacement, whether it was organized or not, did take place, but it wasn't just the displacement that happened because the Jews wanted to go, come in there and, you know, remove all the, all the Arabs. It didn't happen because of that. It happened during a war, a war which started because uh, both sides were offered the option to build a state. Israel declared their uh, Israeli state and independence. The Arabs didn't accept this, and they didn't have any plan of establishing their own state with the current borders. So they declared war on Israel together with Egypt and Jordan. Uh, and as a result of this war, which and it ended badly for them, which is why they referred to, to it as a catastrophe, Egypt and Jordan took control of those very lands which were supposed to be turned into uh, into a possible Arab state. So th there wasn't even a Palestinian or an Arab state uh, distinctly established there. It was Egypt and Jordan that took control of those regions. And the displacement happened because of that very war that the Arabs waged on Israel because they didn't want to accept uh, the existence of a Jewish state in the region. Yeah, and you'll notice that there was never the slightest peep about we have to have a Palestinian state yep. when yep. Egypt was occupying uh, Gaza and Jordan was occupying Judea and Samaria. Yep. Nobody said, hey, there has to be a Palestinian state because there wasn't any Palestinians yet. And so the, the, uh, the agitation for Palestinian self-determination is actually just a disguised jihad against Israel. Uh, there's one last thing I've got to get in, David. There's very many things that can be said about this. But one thing I think is very important, and that is this, that the Jews started to uh, settle in Palestine in large numbers in the 19th century. And at that time, the area was very desolate and empty. Mark Twain actually toured there, among many other people, and remarked upon how he would go for miles without seeing any human beings at all. And the Arabs, many of the Arabs who are now the indigenous Palestinians, so-called, were actually brought in by the Ottomans at the time of the Zionist surge of Jewish settlement in the area because they wanted to counter the Jewish presence that was growing there. And so they brought Arabs from all over the Middle East to become the Palestinian Arabs, and now they're the Palestinians. But a lot of their surnames betray that they're actually from Armenia or from Egypt or from the Maghreb, it, it, all kinds of areas. Even Yasser Arafat was not from, uh, not a Palestinian, strictly speaking, and many others also. They were brought from elsewhere to counter Zionism. So just to uh, just to recap here and make sure I'm understanding this stuff correctly, um, you can go back not to not too far. So you're talking the 19th century, and it's a pretty barren land. Um, there are Jews moving there. There are Jews. There 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 were Jews who were always there, just like there were some other people who have been there uh, a long time. Uh, but you have Jews from other places in the world moving there. Um, and then the Ottoman Empire sees, oh, Jews are, uh, are stacking the deck here, more, sending more and more people here. Therefore, mm -hmm. to counteract that, we need to make sure we're uh, sending people down there as well. 
Um, and so you have uh, Arabs and other groups from other parts, from other parts of the Ottoman Empire. They're going there now. And then once there's actually, once the land is becoming under the control, so post-World War II, once the land is going to be under the control of the Jews, they're, they're, but they're, they're establishing a country. And then other countries are, going, are claiming they're going to wipe this new, this new country off the map. So they tell the Muslims there, hey, get out of there because we're going to go wipe these people out and we don't want you to get ca caught in the crossfire. So they leave, but then the Jews win, and all of a sudden, the, those people who left because they didn't want to uh, be be wiped out with the Jews, they say, "Okay, now we want our we want our land." Yeah, back. We, we we were, got guys, out. we were just kidding, guys. <laughs> and and I got to tell you, David, there are a lot of people. I'm looking at the comments here. There are a lot of jihad jihad uh, allies and anti semites and such in the comments. So I just want to say. You uh, will find documentation. You will find uh, abundant proof of everything I'm saying and much more in the book, The Palestinian Delusion. I challenge anybody who is watching this to disprove even one thing in that book. You know, people can call me all the names they want, but they've never we will. a single thing that I have said. <laughs> and you can, all of this is the way that it actually happened, contrary to the lies mm -hmm. that the, the, Dobagandists are feeding you every day. And Robert, so that book, to... that book once again is titled The Palestinian Delusion, because we do have some requests uh, for the, uh, there you have it. All right. Robert, Robert, I want to challenge uh, one thing that you said, and then uh, add some other things to just support what you, what you said. Uh, the one thing I would slightly challenge and have a slight disagreement on is that um, Palestine did not exist. So Palestine as... Um, as a region with a specific group named named the Palestinians did not exist. Um, we do have um, the earliest traces of a movement that begins to refer to the people there as Palestinians. It starts at the in the in the early uh, 20th century, but it is still a very unpopular movement and only becomes slightly popular among some activists during the British mandate of Palestine. Uh, but then later, uh, the Arabs collectively accepting this idea of being Palestinians and, you know, demanding a nation uh, called Palestine only happens in the 1960s. So um, they didn't yeah. completely make it up, but they, they took a, an emerging invented concept and then pretended that this is their whole history and always has been. So <laughs> am I correct there? Do you want to correct me there? Well, yeah, sure. But you're talking about a very tiny group. Yes, uh, yes. Haj, Haj Amin al Husseini was the Mufti of Jerusalem, the very famous Mufti of Jerusalem who met with Hitler in World War II. People don't mm -hmm. know. There's that famous picture of, of, the, of the Mufti of Jerusalem with Hitler. People don't know. This was not just some courtesy meeting. Al Husseini lived at the expense of the Nazi German government in Berlin from 1941 to 45. And he actively worked with Adolf Eichmann to strategize about killing Jews. And so, uh, and he did that while making broadcasts, pro-Nazi broadcasts in Arabic, calling upon Muslims to join the Nazis based on Islamic principles and quoting yeah. the Quran. Now, Haj Amin al-Husseini was Mufti of Jerusalem. In 1921, he was in Jerusalem and he oversaw a large scale massacre of the Jews. And he did that at the behest of the British. The British thought that the Jews, if they saw that it was going to be lethal to live there, would pull out. And the British were no friends of the Jews, even though they had the Palestine mandate. So they actually helped Haj Amin al-Husseini carry out this pogrom of the Jews in 1921 in Jerusalem. It's all in the, in the book, The Palestinian Delusion. And Haj Amin al-Husseini then for years, up until he moved to Berlin, led other violent actions and called for other violent actions against the Jews. And he was the foremost enemy of the Zionists in what was to become Israel. And never once did he use the term Palestinians or did he call the people that he was fighting for Palestinians. It was yeah. all about the Arabs. He was actually 
a, an integral member. I believe he might have even been the head for a while of the Arab Higher Committee. Yeah, yeah. Then there and, is a picture you can see it right here. And I want to just add. They were BFFs. They were BFFs for a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the Nazis even spread pamphlets uh, throughout the throughout the the Arab regions to uh, you know praise their their commitment to the cause and uh, talk about a wonderful future that they could achieve if they just got rid of the enemy, which is of course the Jews. Uh, it's it's pretty messed up. People don't want to acknowledge this or don't even want to know about this. Uh, but one thing to come to the origins of the Palestinians is that we actually have genetic um, genetic research nowadays which shows that the Palestinian people, Arabs uh, in the region, are not a distinct specific group. They are a mix of many different people, and there is a trace of uh, of genetics in them that uh, ties some of them back to you know ancient peoples that lived there thousands of years ago, Canaanites but, and so on. Yeah, but the same thing yeah. is also found throughout populations in the entire Levant. So that yeah. doesn't mean anything at all. And yeah, also like like Jews like I like I'm two point seven percent Jewish. So yeah, yeah. that's the point. It's <laughs> so anyway. That, that's uh, uh this there's there, there was this question here, uh, and and Robert's already covered quite a bit of this. Uh, but are yeah. Palestinians descendants of ancient Jews of the region who were converted to Christianity under the Romans and then to Islam under Arabs Ottomans? The point is, it's probably a mixture. There were there were yeah. some Jews who converted to Christianity, and there are there were people who uh, converted to Islam and it's there's if you're if you're if you're going into the genetics, you're going to get a bunch of people. You're going to get a bunch of the people who who moved in later. The point is, you're going to end up with uh, a lot of genetics from a lot of different areas. It wasn't just some group that was sitting there the entire time until, you know, yeah. Jews came along and uh, pushed them off the land. And now they're they're freedom fighting to get it back. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we are now an hour into the show and AP and Robert have conspired to keep us from ever getting to the Jordan Peterson. Um. <laughs> Wait, I want to I want to add one more thing. Just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's it's an Ottoman thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I uh, but I've seen a ton of uh, a ton of the comments going around talking about talking about um, no, everything was fine until Zionism. And I don't know if we'll actually sure. get to the video now, but uh, uh, there is the video from the Dean Show. You, you guys can check it out if we don't get to it. If we if we have time, we'll get to it. But um, the, uh, the, the Dean Show uh, was 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 just made a video, and it's specifically in response to Jordan Peterson. They're trying to correct Jordan Peterson, and the claim is that that Jews and Muslims were like this until <laughs> Zionism. They were bet they were best buddies until. Zionism and anyone, I mean, anyone um, who knows who knows anything about uh, about the history of Islam. I mean, you go back to Muhammad himself. And of course, this is one of many, ladies and gentlemen, there are a bunch of these. That's why you'll keep seeing this in different versions. But it, this is uh, Sahih Muslim here. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, the messenger of Allah said, the hour will not begin until the Muslims fight the Jews and the Muslims will kill them until a Jew hides behind a rock or a tree and the rock or tree will say, O oh Muslim, O oh slave of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. You find these kinds of things in the Muslim sources. And so there's always been a hostility there. And it, it, you guys know, it's, it, this is actually a, a good lead in to the reaction to Jordan Peterson, because you see the exact same thing when Jordan Peterson was useful to them because he's going to give them he's going to give them access to a new audience for Dawa. They showered him with praise. They loved him. He's so great. Then the moment he said, uh, you know, I don't like your ally, then they start heaping abuse on him. The, the moment he, the moment he says, hey, Netanyahu, uh, yeah, go get these guys. Then the, I mean, like. I, I mean, it, it's countless. It's endless. Now everything he posts is, is is he's being bombarded by tweets going after him because of this, going after him, not just him, just his daughter as well, going after his daughter because he said that. But notice this goes all the way back. When Muhammad thought the Jews were on his side about something, he he had he had all kinds of praise for them. Same thing with the Christians. Christians are wonderful when he thinks Christians are on the same side. Then once they go, no, you're you're actually a false prophet. We don't believe in you. Then ah, you have to be destroyed. You're the worst enemy in the world. You're the worst of creatures, and so on. But notice that gets imprinted onto the community as long as you're uh, you're a Christian or Jew or whoever you may be. But if you're on our side on something, we'll shower you with praise. You're great. And the moment you say something we don't like, then we we heap insults and abuse on you. 
And that's just been the pattern for 14 centuries. And so can you go to places? Look, Muhammad sounds like he really likes Jews here. Yeah, of course you can. Because there were times like that. Can you go uh, to places where it really, really sounds like, uh, hey, guys, you're not getting your virgins until you completely wipe all of them out. And even when they hide, don't worry, nature itself will help you exterminate them. That's kind of uh, kind of bad. And I, I, I don't think this all just comes from uh, Zionism, my friends. But well, by the way, there's a there is a regular Muslim in the chat who is often here who is casually making um uh, Holocaust jokes and uh, laughing about Jews being gassed shocker. and stuff like that. So very, very, very nice impression by Muslims here. All Charming right. people. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and check out some of these. And what's interesting is because yesterday I said they don't seem to understand personality types and they always use this just basic two step manipulation process. Do what we like. We shower you with praise. Do something we don't like. We shower you with abuse. That actually works with lots of people. You can steer entire populations in the direction you want them. So that is a successful method. It doesn't work with people like Jordan Peterson. I pointed that out, that they always use the exact same methodology, no matter who they're dealing with. Um, and so I pointed out it's not going to work with him. But I was thinking, you know, Jordan is constantly bombarded with criticism. So it could be like too much to where he kind of backs off. Like, okay, I'm not going to push this. You're not going to change his mind. At the end of the day, they're just, they're, they're putting him now in the enemy camp. Um, so you're not going to be effective like that, but I was thinking maybe he would back up, but he didn't back off at all. He just kept, he's, he keeps right on posting, uh, blasting away at them, but let's just zoom through some. And that brings us to the, to the end of the stream because we are now one hour past and we have still not. Yep. We've been, all right, we'll catch you all next time. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe next time we'll actually get to some of the, uh, Jordan Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, let's zo zoom through these real quick. Like, uh, guys, jump in. I I'm just going to I'm just going to zoom through uh, Jordan's tweets for the past uh, couple days and uh, anything you want to comment on, you can. Otherwise, I'll, I'll just read them real quick just to show you uh, what Muslims are reacting to. So this is the one that uh, sort of started off. Uh, give them hell, Netanyahu, enough is enough. And people no, flip. No, 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 no. That's not how we're going to say it. Give them hell, Netanyahu. Give them hell, Netanyahu, eh? Okay. Give them hell in a big barrel of maple syrup. <laughs> okay. okay. This, uh, is not a joke. this is not this is a serious issue, David. Yeah. In response to Victorian socialist solidarity to the Palestinian resistance. I mean, notice they posted that right after the Hamas went and slaughtered a bunch of Jews, and then hey, solidar solidarity with the guys who are uh, uh, slaughtering all these people. And he said, "You murderous anti-Semitic rats." Not nice. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a serious matter. Please stop joking about his voice. Um, another six. Another no, six. You got to do it in the voice, man. No, I can't do it. It's too many. I have a thousand of these trying to do it real quick. Uh, another six billion for our Iranian allies. Eh? <laughs> uh, uh, here we have. I'm shocked. Shocked, I say. How now, Justin Trudeau? <laughs> Is this one of your progressives? So this is from True North. True North said, exclusive, a senior advisor to a liberal cabinet minister shared an Instagram post condoning Palestinian revolutionary violence and using a hashtag calling for the destruction of Israel. Peterson jokingly says he's uh, he's shocked. Um... This is a retweet, but look at what he's retweeting. So Victor David Hansen, here we are 78 years after the end of the Holocaust. And once again, thuggish killers dressed in black are pulling Jewish elderly uh, women and children out of their homes and executing them and then throwing their bodies into the street. But in 1945, we were fighting the SS murderers. Now we are sending millions in subsidies to their modern Hamas killer squad counterparts. We, the American people, should demand not one more American cent to these Gestapo and SS killers. And Jordan reposted that after, I mean, after being uh, horribly blasted uh, by the keyboard jihadis. Um, here we have, he's responding to Dr. Eli David, spokesperson for Hamas. We thank Iran who provided us with weapons, money, and other equipment. They gave us missiles to destroy Zionist fortresses and helped us with anti-tank missiles. Looks like the $6 billion Biden gave Iran is being well spent. And Jordan Peterson, how now, Joe Biden? Didn't Trump <laughs> warn you of this? 
Why are you guys laughing? I don't know. You know I think it's like I think I'm being dumb. But what am I going to do if you're laughing? <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> By the way, what? what? <laughs> What what's up with the how now? By the way, like how how now? Every is starting every other tweet with how now. Like I don't all I remember. Like every time he says it, all I remember is how now, brown cow, right? Um. So this is from Ezra Levant. You personally directed fifty million dollars to Hamas controlled Gaza after other democracies cut them off for corruption and terrorism. You took Canadian tax dollars and gave them to Jew killers. You literally funded this. You literally funded this attack. And then, of course, how now, Justin Trudeau, and it's Trudeau, and Oil Ollie London. There are now at least two women confirmed kidnapped. I think it's a bunch, right? Uh, while attending the same music festival, the Festival for Peace near the Gaza border earlier today, one woman, Noah, was seen in a video being kidnapped and screaming while being assaulted and driven away on a motorbike. Uh, and then this this tweet went on, but. Uh, Jordan Peterson said, we're fighting oppression. Sincerely, the demented rapists of the Gaza invasion. Gosh, he's not pulling punches uh-huh. there. I thought the uh, I thought that low level manipulation was supposed to work. Hey, David, uh, very quick issue. Um, uh-huh. I know Mehdi Hassan is not a good guy by any means, but uh, do you happen to have that little exchange between him and Daniel Kikachu? Because it's it's a it's. It's pretty messed up. Not at all. And I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you want to describe it for us? Uh, yeah, there, there uh, was a... One second. I only have, uh, I think I only have two more of these, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Of, sure. of Jordan's messages. And then you can, you can uh, fill us in on, on that. Sure. And, yeah. uh, let's see. So spiked here. The left need to ask themselves why they hate Israel more than any other nation on earth. Why the world's only Jewish state angers them more than any other country. Because to the rest of us, it just looks like old fashioned bigotry. And Jordan Peterson says, the left disguises its Jew hatred with compassion for the oppressed. (laughs) Robert is, everyone thinks Robert's mean because he posts about jihad all the time. They think he's mean, but if you know him, he's like constantly (laughs) cracking up at everything. (laughs) Like, like, like if you were a comedian, you would want, you could pay Robert as a comedian to be in your audience because they, it, it, it is good to have people who crack up laughing a bunch. Um, so if I ever become a comedian, I'm going to be like, Robert, come check out my show and get everyone laughing. Uh, and, uh, let's see the national post as Israeli innocents are hunted down and murdered. Certain Canadian progressives choose to celebrate. And, uh, that's just how progressive we truly are. Sincerely Canadian progressives. So these are the, uh, Robert, (laughs) what is this? (laughs) <laughs> it's not, it's not, I'm doing the same dumb joke over and over again. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you see what I'm saying about him, about him being an awesome laugh? Like AP, AP is laughing just because Robert is laughing. That's I know. What I mean. That's what I mean Robert's, by having an having an awesome laugher uh, in, a, in an audience. Robert is cracking me up. <laughs> All right, AP, what were you saying about Daniel and... uh uh Mehdi Hassan, that's the guy, he's on, he's on, what is he on, CNN and or MSNBC? Or C- okay, yeah, MSNBC. On, on channel, I don't know, but so Mehdi Hassan is, is one of those people who will defend Islam and who will call us, us Islamophobes and all of that, that stuff. You know, he's by no means a, a, a good guy that I would, that I would like, but um, in response to what has been happening, he actually tweeted out something, sorry, X'd out something, that says, uh, taking children as hostages, if confirmed, is barbarism, plain and simple, and does nothing to advance the cause of peace, resistance, or ending the occupation. The response to the ongoing suffering and killing of Palestinian children is not to make Israeli children suffer. Now, that is what is being said. Daniel it's pretty, Kikich, it's pretty, pretty tame. But if if Dan, I were Daniel if, Pikachu, if I were Dan, if I Daniel if I had to guess I have no clue what you're talking about if I had to guess I would guess he's in for some whataboutism what about this um, actually it is directly Daniel Kikachu's tweet is directly your transformation to complete Zionist shill is now complete that's the tweet and so uh, take this let, let this sink in Mehdi Hassan's whole point here is uh, mm-hmm. I see what's going on. How does it help to take children hostage and, and make, make children that suffer? That makes you a Zionist shill. And Daniel Kikachu has a problem with that. 
with 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 opposing yeah. the abduction they, of children. They, it says, "You are now a Zionist shield." Notice it's Guys, it's it's, it's, it, it's the exact it's the notice it's the exact same thing. Like if we say, "Hey, we don't approve of killing apostates." Ah, you're you're liberal Christians. You're liberal Christians. You're fake Christians. You're pretending to be Christians. Uh, okay, I don't believe in like uh, in like uh, taking little kids as captives and and then raping them. Ah, you're a Zionist shill, you Zionist shill. I'm just gonna sit here and call you a Zionist shill until you learn mm -hmm. to shut up about uh, you know taking kids and. Wow. See, see, I think Daniel Hakika Jews a fed. Oh, he's, he's a fake Muslim trying to. It's like those guys at, at, right after 9/11, the FBI because they're so stupid. They would send people into mosques and they would say, hey, let's get some jihad together, fellas. And the Muslims there would realize, oh, this guy's a fed and he's trying to entrap us. And uh, I think Daniel Hakikaju is is the same thing. He's 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 about as real. Like I said before, he's about as real as Ali G. He, he's 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 he can't possibly be so stupid as to think that when he says something like that, he's being attractive and making people think, oh, yeah, I got to get in on this Islam and do some raping. It, it's here's, incredible. Here's what's interesting. It's like, so there, there are two polar extremes of what he could be, but on either extreme, he's going to act the exact same way, right? Like if he is what he claims to be, then it's just, Hey, I have no problem with any of this. I love beating women and I, I, I will defend child brides and molesting kids and all this stuff and beating women into submission and so on. And it's just, Hey, that's what's on the page. That's what I'm going to defend. This is the way it is. But if he were someone who's being paid to make Islam look as bad as possible by, by bringing all these things into the light, he will do the exact same thing, right? So whether he is like, the ultimate uh, stick to the letter guy, he's going to be doing this. And if he's like someone who's undercover being paid to destroy it from within, exact, exact same behavior. And that's why people are that's why people are confused. It's like, you know, which one are you? Um, so this is anyway, this is going to be fun to either way. We love he's you, Daniel. Islam look bad. Yeah, he's Daniel, if you're a fed who's destroying Islam from within and getting all these followers rallying around you so you can ultimately dash their hopes. Uh, we are proud of awesome. that. Awesome. We're proud. <laughs> and we're proud of that. <laughs> I got the button. <laughs> Keep it up, brother. Daniel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, he, yeah, whatever, whatever his intentions, we love Daniel. Uh, he is our, as far as like going on shows and so on, he would be my top pick. Uh, you you got to say, you got to say hijab is the Jordan. But as far as. Uh, who's going to be even more shocking once he blurts out everything Islam teaches? You you got to go with uh, you got to go with Daniel. Except um, if the listener is Patrick Bit David, who is like, oh okay, okay, interesting. Ooh, so yeah. let's talk about what oh, we have okay, in so you, let's so talk you, about so, Dylan Mulvaney. So you want to kill all these guys, right? All right, well let's build some bridges here. Hey, Dylan Mulvaney. What are we doing? <laughs> uh, if comes... he has a moment, like it's funny how. Uh, it's exactly the same phenomenon with Patrick Bet David that you were talking about with Jordan Peterson, because before the show, uh, Hijab and Ali Dawa were heaping him with abuse because uh, they thought that uh, yeah, right, he, a perfect he, example. They were walking into an ambush, which is ridiculous on the face of it. But anyway, after he gave them what they wanted, then they had nothing, nothing but, but praise, praise for him. nothing but. But praise, if he ever right? comes around and says, you know, I don't want your Allah. Then uh, he's going to be in the same in for the same mm -hmm. treatment that Jordan Peterson. Yep. Oh, dare you! You are insane! You. Sick yep. Person. So they will praise him as long as he is doing exactly what they want, which he is yeah. currently doing. Uh, if he ever gets too freaked out by it and just says, "Whoa, this is too much," then it will suddenly uh, it will suddenly change to raining down fire uh, and insults. Uh, upon him. A uh, couple super chats here. Hello, Dr. David Wood. Please, is it possible to have a chat debate with Christians like Paul Wallace? He's an ex-pastor and vast Gnostic with a different view of Jesus and Yahweh. Uh, never heard of him. Probably not. Uh, there are people who uh, who might he's be familiar with him. Huh? I doubt he, he could. He really be a Gnostic? Are there Gnostics anymore? That's a that's like a second century heresy. Come on. Yeah. Uh, be yeah. So. Maybe he is, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I usually don't. If I don't know anything about it, I usually don't uh, get into the discussions. But yeah, some someone else might. 
to dispel random okay to dispel any idea that philistines are palestinian there's genetic data that philistines originate from sea peoples from the uh, from the aegean but yeah that that's who the philistines they, they were, were. Migrants. Uh -oh. yeah yeah they're like hey, wait a minute i originate from sea people from the aegean yikes i am not now and have never been a palestinian you are now no. I'm, I'm pretty sure the idea is that that the, that the Philistines well, weren't they they are considered like related to uh, Greek people. Yeah, Greeks. Yeah, the whole whole Indo-European family who were uh, who settled uh, yeah, there I... in that region and who were specifically concentrated around what is uh, now known as the Gaza Strip, which is why only that small region was known as Philistine. Uh, but then later, it was for political reasons expanded to the whole region. I think um... that's the pretty much it. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Anyway. Uh, show the book one more time, Robert, because we have Keep Up the Good Work, guys. Prayers for Israel. What was the book shown earlier? I will add the link to this uh, right after we are done here. I'll add a link to anyone who wants to grab the book since a bunch of people have asked about it. Um, let's see. A couple more. Didn't Jews from all over the Middle East migrate to Israel as well with encouragement? Oh, yeah. No, that, they were kicked out. That's another thing. They were kicked out. There were 900,000 Jews from uh, Morocco all across North Africa, the Middle East. They had lived there from uh, the time that the Romans expelled the Jews from the area of Judea and Samaria. This is documented history. And they were forced to leave lands they had lived in for 1900 years in 1948 when the state of Israel was formed. Wait, shouldn't, they be, given, shouldn't they be given their, their land back? Yes, they should. They should have a right of return. And I want to also note that people often sometimes actually acknowledge this and say, uh, yes, and the Jews lived in peace and harmony. Um, look, I, I got I, I have all the records on this, ladies and gentlemen, the in the Palestinian delusion in the history of jihad uh, in Morocco, for example, the Jews lived there. There's still some Jews there and they uh, had to actually petition the local governor in one city in Morocco in the late 19th century for permission to wear shoes because part of the humiliation that they had to live under as the dhimmis under chapter 9 verse 29 of the Quran was that they were not allowed to wear shoes and they were not allowed to ride horses so they had to walk everywhere barefoot and in those days there was not plumbing like there is today you threw the sewage out on the road and that's what they had to walk through to get everywhere and they asked for permission to wear shoes, it was denied. So this is just one in microcosm example of what the Jews endured in those Muslim lands for 1900 years. Then they were forcibly expelled and live in Israel today, which is another reason why it's a total myth that the Israelis are Europeans. Quite a lot of them, if not a majority, are uh, Sephardis from the Middle East, from North Africa, from the what's known as the Islamic world. And uh, there's nobody ever talks about them being refugees with any right of return. Uh, Robert, uh, this is sounding a little weird because, again, I just checked. I just watched some of the, the Dean show where he was saying you, no one had a problem with Muslims didn't have a problem with Jews until Zionism. And that Muslims were the great defenders of Jews for, for up until up until Zionism. And so you're talking about some weird stuff in uh, Morocco. So, so let me get this straight. You, you, you have, uh, you have Israel formed and then, uh, Jews get kicked out of other countries. And so they go to Israel, but then they're told you have to be wiped out of Israel. And it's like, where, where exactly are you supposed to go? You were kicked out of where you'd been for centuries. Mm -hmm. This is just weird stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm totally, I'm totally confused here. I made a video about this, by the way, which is uh, Islam's dark history with Jews. I made that a long time ago, but I basically broke down the history of Jews and uh, it, the whole idea that they were completely treated with peace and tolerance in the Muslim world is a complete lie. It's not true. Uh, Amber <laughs> here says, new subscriber to you and AP and watched your old Linda Sarsour videos. I always wondered what happened to her, but now I understand it's David's fault. Wait, what's David's fault? <laughs> Like that she's I, never, I haven't she's... heard of that name in a long time. Yeah, Linda Sarsour. Uh, <laughs> let's see. You know what's, what I think is important to add here? Um, so a lot of people talk about Palestine, the Palestinians and their land and, you know, the Palestinian nation and all of that. Um, so the, the whole idea of a Palestinian nation, the whole idea of nation states is not an idea that was popular or even very much known. 
among the people that lived in, in that region. For centuries, they just lived as subjects, as regular um, people distributed under the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire didn't care about nations. They didn't have such a such a concept. Mm -hmm. They simply divided their empire into different uh, regions, into, into uh, vilayets, and uh, ha you know, named them by whatever they may have in common. The populations, their subjects, would identify each other or identify themselves by their religious affiliations very uh, mostly and possibly the language they speak so um the entire idea of a nation of a palestinian nation or a syrian nation or this and that nation is a western idea that is nationalism that didn't exist in the region so <laughs> you know that idea of of adopting uh you know, th this whole ideology of a palestinian uh, nation of a palestinian identity would be something that those people who are part of an empire would adopt from the West. So it's it's kind of a strange thing of them to simply say, you know, this was us, this was our nation, you took it away from us. No, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can now anachronistically say, oh, it, there was always a nation, but no, back in the day, they didn't have a concept of a nation. It simply did not exist. And did the Ottoman Empire mm -hmm. get that land by buying it from a grocery store or anything. No, the Ottoman Empire had the goal of conquering the world. They conquered places. And in that case, in the First World War, they lost that place. Britain took over and they wanted to build a nation. And now we have the mess that we are dealing with. Um, we have a comment here. I, I have no idea what anyone is listening to when they keep posting the same stupid comment over and over again. Uh, Prashi here says, if Israel's ancestral homeland of Jews, then why is Ukraine not ancestral homeland of Russians? Kievan Rus was based out of Ukraine and Mongols destroyed it. Why should Russia not overtake Ukraine then? Uh, somehow, somehow people, people like this are hearing when we're talking. Hey, the Jews once controlled it. Therefore, it's the Jews land now. I don't recall saying that. I don't recall even thinking that in my entire life. It's never crossed my mind. Robert is responding to lies, namely, oh, this is just this land and it's run by this group of Palestinians. And then these Jews from other countries come in there and they take it over and they push everyone off. The it's all lies. It's all lies. One, there were Jews who were always there. So that's a lie. That's say, saying that, uh, you know, they, they weren't there and they just came from outside, right? He broke down. Uh, uh, people moving there from Zion. He broke down people coming from other uh, lands because they're being pushed down. So broke down all the. What we're saying is the explanation of these guys, this group here is these, uh, they were the original people and they have the right to the land because outsiders came and pushed them off there. That's a lie. What you have is there's one group now that has political control. We need to live with it because that's how the world works right now. And saying, hey, we're going to give it back to these other guys because they're the rightful owners. That's a lie. So stop they that myth. It. Yeah. They that's never a myth. even existed. I'm not. It's not. No one is. Saying, oh, the Jews were on there once. Therefore, they should have it. No one's Plus saying that. I mean, I mean, you do have people who I mean, you do have some people who say that's not what we're saying. <laughs> So quit, quit saying that we're saying that. You sound like, you sound stupid. I don't care if you give a super chat. That sounds stupid. My so you can have your ally. <laughs> oh my goodness. Plus terrible comparison, by the way. Uh, and and who cares about Russians? I don't care about Russians or Ukrainians, except in the sense that they're human beings. Other than that, I do not trust Russians at all. I don't trust Putin. A bunch I, of I, I, egomaniacs. I have to correct dumb. that. By the way, I'm part I Russian. <laughs> <laughs> I have to correct that stupid idea. What? Russians are not the people who are the Kievan Rus. That is that is historic revisionism. That yeah. Is really not true. So don't. Yeah, that real, that Russians stole that land. No, Ru Russians are simply descendants of the. They people stole who are it. The Kievan, Kievan they Rus. stole it just, from from me. Just. Just as much as Ukrainians. They or stole the it from me, pushed me off. I had to move to the U.S. because they pushed me off. I want my Russia back. Putin, okay, yeah. Putin, you hear this? <laughs> Give me my land back because this person here, Prashi, whatever, says that, you know, it's right of return. And I, I you know, I get the I get my land back because somehow that's how yeah, the world works. I'm still waiting for AP to give me my villa in Turkey. Yeah, I will. One day, one day. Once uh, I yeah. control the whole land, I will. The Real Masquerade says, uh, I'll always trust the real author of the Quran. Indeed, that is uh, that is. Um, that is Robert Spencer. 
Um, Alba oh Murray. my God! I, Igor said, uh, "I hope you bring up the fact to me. I hope you bring up the fact that there were no Greeks, Bulgarians, Hungarians, Germans, etc. That was also invented in the 1800s. There was." Okay, when exactly did I did I when exactly did I say? Apparently, no one. Apparently, apparently, there's a bunch of people in the chat who went to the uh, Kathy Newman School of uh, uh, Listening Comprehension. They keep hearing. You remember Kathy Newman, Robert uh, uh, Jordan Peters say, "Oh, lobster." And she so you're saying that lobsters should come and kill us all? It's uh, like yeah. what? What the heck are you listening to, lady? Right. That's. <laughs> I I never said you don't need to, to respond. That is so. Okay, whatever. Okay. Yeah. It's, anyway, uh... that's not that's not even true. That's not yeah, even it's not true. true. It's not true. As it's a not Greek, true. I can tell you there are thousands of references to Greeks before the 1800s. They were not invented in the 1800s. Nor were Bulgarians, Hungarians, or Germans. Germany, Bulgarian, as, a, as a united country, came to be in 1871. Uh, but uh, the the idea that Germans didn't exist before that is just a historical twaddle. Yeah. And here we have, uh, what about Israelis attacks on us Christians? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we get attacked all the time. Yeah. You, you could show videos of like Christians being mistreated and so on. Guess what? You could show videos in the U S of, of Jews being mistreated. So what are you going to say? Like, like that's how, that's the official dominant position that everyone is, is in. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it, but this is this is another example of you could pick any country that Jews are in and show examples of Jews being treated horribly. And notice you could say if you wanted to, you could say, look at how this country treats Jews. Right. That's the official way this country treats Jews. You could do that. You would instantly regard that as deceptive. But, you know, you could do it here uh -huh. uh, with the Jews. And that's the only place it's acceptable. Um, what is the one country? in which the Christian population has grown in the Middle East since 1948? Saudi Arabia. Incorrect. <laughs> and is Israel. That is correct. Uh, you are correct, sir. Uh, Snite says, do you think this might be the start of Zechariah 12, 2 to 3, or is that prophecy already started long ago with what's going on in Israel? Also massive earthquakes happened in Afghanistan that killed 2,400. Uh, yes, no, you, you know, th these things can be fulfillment of prophecy, but... If you're, you know, you could point to a prophecy like that and point to lots of things that could be the fulfillment of that of that prophecy. So, uh, yeah, if there are, if there are specific details that relate, I'd have to see them. But uh, prophecy is just not my area. Um, but Scarlett the, says. The Victor said, by the way, AP, I challenge you to say one bad thing about Israel. Yes, I don't like the fact that uh, that Israel gives too much importance uh, to um, uh, some religiously motivated laws and that there is a strong religious right uh you see this and, it's always it's always a hatred of religion with ap no no, no not, nothing to do with that i just think that it's that the, that the Every, uh, everyone has everyone has to be an atheist oh but the, if atheism were imposed on everyone that would be great <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like the fact that they still uh, allow Hamas to exist so there I said a few bad things about Israel uh, Scarlett here says this is wrong. I, I, I get to the Muslim comments, but uh, I was trying to zoom through these super chats. So there's a bunch. Uh, do these rapid fire. This is wrong. You can't make fun of JP behind his back without stealing his lunch money. <laughs> is, there, is there? Is there? Is there? Is that? A, is that based on something, or is that just a? I don't know. Uh, Rashid says, uh, why doesn't the mainstream media talk about how Egypt will not give even temporary refuge to civilians fleeing Gaza? Does the MSM not understand the full situation? Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if people are, if all these nations were actually concerned about the Palestinians as a people, you would say, okay, come live here. We've got the land that we, from where we kicked the Jews out of, uh, matter of fact, Hey, you could come take the land that we took from the Jews. Well, that'd be a, that'd be a sweet deal, wouldn't it? Um, but no, it's uh, the Muslim world seems to want to keep them there because it's a political and religious tool rather than any actual concern for the people living there. Uh, White Lily says, I'm just paying attention and have nothing to say except Robert Spencer should keep laughing. <laughs> anyway, here's my jizya and precatory <laughs> prayers for Hamas. <laughs> 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 That's good. And then uh, Robert uh, Red Knights, uh, Robert laughs all the time because he has to. If your job was researching murder and rape of innocent people every day, you'd find humor wherever possible. Thanks to all three of 
your work. Yeah, you would you would kind of lose your mind if you uh, didn't have a sense of humor here. Uh, Marilyn no, says, "Got to play a lot of jazz." Uh, Marilyn Murphy says, "Why does David's JP voice remind me of Kermit the Frog?" That's not me. That's because his voice sounds a little a little Kermity. Wow! Wow! Very, very disrespectful. You got to uh, say a little Kermity in Jordan Peterson voice. A little Kermity. <laughs> I know it sounds a little bit of Kermity, eh? It's a little bit on the Kermity side. <laughs> hey, hey! You know, you know, it would break the internet. Get a video of Jordan Peterson singing "Rainbow Connection." You know what I mean? <laughs> Someday we'll find it, eh? A rainbow connection. <laughs> Uh, Sid here says Muslim religious freedom means being second class citizens under the rule where you can never marry Muslim women, but they can marry your female relatives. And yeah, that's funny because that was actually brought up in a point uh, as a point in the video that we're not going to get to. Um, but uh, on the Dean show, they're bringing that up. See, we can't hate Jews. We're allowed to we're allowed to marry Jews. We're allowed to marry Jews. See, it's great. And it'll point out you can marry them because in Islamic uh uh, legal thinking, it's you're taking over the reproductive capabilities of the enemy. Are Muslim women okay. allowed to marry a Jewish man? No. The rules suddenly I, change. I just want to that. ask everyone one question. Uh, David, David, you can answer it if you want this. Robert, you can give me an answer if you think uh, that you can imagine this. But uh, how do you think you would uh, be, how do you think you would view a specific uh, religious group if you learn from your religion directly for thousands of years that um, that before the hour comes and the hour is always possibly imminent before the hour comes, you will fight that religious group and you will kill every single one of them. And even the trees and rocks will say there is a Jew behind me. Come and kill them. Uh, Except of except for one specific tree, which is the tree of the Jews, how how would you perceive that religious group if that is how you how you were taught about your religion? The, like they're monsters on earth, and this is something that we see often from people who uh, uh, leave Islam and they move to Europe or they move to America. And uh, I've, there, I've seen numerous testimonies where they say, "And I met a Jew, and he he was just an ordinary person." And I was expecting him to be this slavering monster who was uh, killing people left and right and, and laying waste. We get they, we get that too. We get that too. By the way, where we actually have someone on and they join us for a discussion, they're like, "Wow, this is the first time I ever heard you know actually talk to you guys, and you seem nice." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hey, this is uh, Stephen Young here says, uh, return the Kaaba to the moon worshipers as well as their magic rock. And this is a good point where I, I'm kind of I kind of joke around. And I say free Mecca, free Mecca. But imagine you imagine you found the descendants today of some group that were actually uh, pagans who were kicked out of Mecca when, you know, Surah 9, 5 was revealed. Slay them wherever you find them once the sacred months have passed. And suppose you found a group and they had you found evidence and and archaeological evidence and writings and so on that proved these groups, this group fled Mecca and went. Now you have their descendants. Would any Muslim on the planet therefore say, okay, now give Mecca back to them? No, it would never enter their minds. And yet somehow in this one instant, this becomes the rule. You had it at some point or you were there at some point, therefore give it back. And we'll just make up a bunch of stuff to, to sort of uh, strengthen the case. Well, I it's an Islamic imperative. Them. Yeah. It's a Quranic imperative, drive them out from where they drove you out. Yeah. So they have to, in the first place, cast the Jews as having driven the Arabs out, even though they didn't. And then they have to claim that in all kinds of other contexts, such that if ever Islam ruled any land, then the Muslims have a divine imperative to drive out whoever rules it now. And so that's one reason why there's also an effort to get Spain back. Mm -hmm. And Spain would be next on the list if they destroyed Israel. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go to we got some more super chats and so on. But let's go to some of these uh, responses to Jordan Peterson. So this is uh, Muhammad Hijab. Do you think mm -hmm. Netanyahu is going to give Hamas hell? And matter of fact, I mean, this is actually. 
as dumb, I mean, as as horrible as Mohammed Hijaz's behavior always is, this is actually a legitimate. This is the legitimate issue that's being raised. Uh, so he says, "Do you think Netanyahu is going to give Hamas hell?" So this is in response to Jordan Peterson saying, "Give him hell." Do you think that Netanyahu is going to give Hamas hell, or do you think he will intentionally bomb the most densely populated civilian area while he hides in cowardice behind his fortress walls? The real question is, when will Ben Shapiro accept a debate challenge like a man? Ha 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 ha. <laughs> hey, Mohammed Ajab, when are you ever going to uh, defend Mohammed in, in a debate like a man? Oh, never. You keep that stuff off the table and you want to go after whoever's yep. popular to get access to them. Uh, so anyway, so... Uh, no, notice Mohammed Hijab here is is uh, portraying Netanyahu as someone who just wants to kill civilians and just wants to kill a bunch of people. Uh, when I say there, there's a part here that's actually a legitimate concern, it's that, you know, Hamas does all these things. But then when Israel retaliates, there are pretty, pretty commonly uh, civilians who get caught in the crossfire. But here's the thing. Hamas knows that. I mean, Hamas knows that these guys don't say, OK, let's go out and march in a battlefield. Uh, let's let's march out of the battlefield. They know they, they won't do that. They'll, hey, we'll go kill a bunch of people and then we'll go hide in here knowing that a bunch of civilians are going to uh, get get be in the crossfire here. And it seems like they want that so that then they can say, oh, look, look at all these. Look at these civilians who got who got uh, killed when uh, bombing Israel bombed civilians. us. Oh, no. And so, uh, yeah, uh, Mohammed Hijab, Mohammed Hijab, there's an answer to that. If you don't want civilians getting caught, caught in the crossfire, every Hamas guy who just was involved in that terrorist attack can step forward and say, walk up there. And if you're really proud of that. But, and we're proud of that. <laughs> if you're really proud of what you did, then just march over there and say, I did it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Punish me. Don't, 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 don't start bombing and, and killing kids. But they won't do that because they're, they actually, you know, it seems like they want people caught in the crossfire. You know what's very ironic here? He's saying that uh, that Netanyahu is doing these things while he lives in his uh, safe uh, fortress. What is very funny is that the Hamas leader uh, currently, I think, still lives in Qatar in in luxury and safety, while he commands Hamas to uh, you know to, to heap all kinds of attacks upon the Israeli population. So yep. think about that. <laughs> Yep. And uh, and I mean, think about all the people who fund this and they're just like wealthy business people and so on. And they, mm -hmm. they actually mm -hmm. fund all this stuff behind the scenes. Okay. Um, and then we have Daniel Hakikachu. How does it feel to be a cheap prostitute? Oh, he's talking about his wife, I think. Hey, hey, leave his wife out of this. How does it feel to be a cheap prostitute? No, no, well, I'm, just, I'm just speculating. Man. Not, I'm not this, is, this is crazy because, I mean, uh, this is Daniel Hakikachu, a guy, uh, again, who is the world's, I can't think of a, of a more significant defender of pedophilia and child molestation and child marriage than Daniel Hakikachu. And these are the same guys who will praise someone if he's doing what they want. And then the moment they say something else, ah, you're a prostitute, you're a whore, ha ha. What a religion, man. It's like, <laughs> what are you guys laughing at him? What a it's, funny, I, it's funny. I do my standard voice for, for Daniel when he doesn't sound like that at all. I don't know why. I have, <laughs> I have my like generic keyboard jihadi voice that I use for all these guys. Uh, and then we have uh, Smile to Jenna. Sick old man. Calls him a sick old man. Hey, you're a sick old man. Uh, we have Robert Carter. Not sure who this guy is, but I see lots of them. I've seen lots he is of them a gym. slimy, disgusting, horrible, uh, supposed convert to to Islam who spends his whole time bashing ex-Muslims and the Islamophobes and stuff like that. And, and yeah, he he does the very same thing. He calls him "you little hoe." <laughs> he says, "Yeah, that's it, Peterson. Earn your new paycheck, you little hoe." So notice the theory is always. <laughs> notice it's always yeah you're getting your paycheck and so on. it always has to be some motive you can't just look at this and say no i think it's bad for these guys to go in and kill a bunch of women and you know kill families and stuff like that i think that's bad and so i think there needs to be retaliation to make sure that you finally deal with these terrorists you can't you can't be that you must be getting your shekels right and that's the uh that's the reasoning uh that goes back to muhammad too and the story of That's the Christians true. of Nagran. And they say, we know this guy's the prophet, but don't uh, don't let on. You have to resist him at every turn because the Byzantines give us money and they'll cut us off if we accept him as a prophet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have uh, Ijaz. <laughs> Ijaz uh, has uh, uh, 
Jordan with some lipstick on and so on. This is a just Ahmed. He's actually like a massive racist. He calls uh, he calls uh, Latinos wetbacks and so on. Uh, he doxes people and so on. So and, and notice that his Muslim community has no problem with this stuff. You can be as racist as you want. And you're totally good to go. So that's a just. Uh, and some random people here always knew you were an agent of the matrix matrix. <laughs> oh, God. you're getting the Tate influence now. <laughs> you're getting this weird hybrid between Islam and, uh, Andrew Tate. Now <laughs> always knew you were an agent of the matrix. Never listened to you and never liked you for a reason. Hypocrite. How dare you? Oh, uh, dare how you? dare you think that, uh, Hamas should be punished for killing a bunch of kids. And then of course this. <laughs> Uh, ah. Hey, you're Netanyahu's dog. It's, it's funny they're actually taking time to do this photoshopping and stuff like this. But hey, if you if you think terrorists should not be, if you think that uh, nations shouldn't just roll out the red carpet for terrorists, then you're uh, you're Netanyahu's uh, uh, dog. You're his Rottweiler. And then uh, they seem to be doing this a lot. So it's a different one, but they seem to get similar ideas. And then I'm not going to post the pictures with the. Uh, uh, Michaela and Tate, but a bunch of people are sharing that. Ah, you're just mad because Tate banged your daughter and stuff. That's a response to, hey, terrorists should be punished. Uh, but here's an example. You're a Zionist show hates Tate because your daughter goes around sharing herself with men around the globe. Educate her. Don't take it out on men. Don't take this out on, don't take your anger about uh, Tate and your daughter uh, out on Hamas just for slaughtering people in the name of Allah. What is this, man? Incredible. This, is, this stuff is all nuts. Um, this is how Muslims respond. Hmm? This is how Muslims respond. That's fantastic. And notice it's 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 never it's never. Hey, let's explain why you're wrong and why this yeah. behavior is actually entirely never. justified and why the media is completely misrepresenting the situation. It's just oh, now you're now you're not doing what we want. So okay, we're going to heap insults and abuse on you until you get sick of it. And the idea is to program people for for the future so that you know. A couple months from now, when something else happens, you're like, just some something in you's like, ah, I'm just going to leave this out. I'm not going to respond to this. Stuff. And it, it happens so quickly. It's like uh, one moment they're like, wow, Jordan Peterson, I respect you so much. Thank you for having a conversation about Islam with true Muslims. I always knew you had it. You know, you had a very good thing about you. You are a very honest man. Fantastic. Brilliant. What a great mind. Mm -hmm. As soon as he says something negative about Islam, like, you, you're you, pathetic. Old, you're weird. Your daughter. Your man, daughter's a liar. You prostitute. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the, that was also the same thing in reverse with Patrick Bet David because yep. Muhammad Hijab was saying, you know, I never liked this guy. I was always suspicious. There was always something off about him. And then after he caved into them, and 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 now apparently he's taking dictation from them. They uh, they praise him to the skies. And I think, wait a minute, what happened to all the suspicion you had of him before that went back supposedly long before you had any contact with him? It's just all completely dishonest and self-serving. Don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Um, and in case anyone is new here, because you may just be clicking on it because of what we're talking about, if, if no one knows what we're talking about, when we talk about Muhammad Hijab, I'll just give you a quick, uh, quick intro. If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. If you just read the Quran, it is halal. It would just it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. In Surah Al-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, lam yahidn. Lam yahidn. And the ones who had never been pubescent before. And by the way, this is very important, yeah? I want all Muslims to be aware of this. The reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, what did you say? It's Wait not because- yeah what, yeah, what did you say, Hijab? Because that's exactly <laughs> what I've been saying for decades and I've been called a liar all along. If you of puberty, because that verse in the Quran uh -huh. actually says, Lam yahidn. they never had puberty before. You can't go around that. The Quran doesn't say, doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that the woman has to be pubescent. I dare you to find one verse in the Quran 
where it says you're not allowed to marry someone based on harm. Won't find it. Or you're not allowed to have sexual intercourse based on harm. Doesn't exist. Or you're not allowed to marry someone based on puberty. Not in there. So if you're a Quran alone, no, you're allowed to have no, sexual intercourse no, with five-year-olds. Get me one verse in the Quran which says the woman has to be pubescent. No. One verse. I want one verse in the Quran from the beginning of the book to the end of the book which says that she has to be perfect. He's got a point. So, okay, so that makes it halal from your perspective. Halal. From your perspective, it's halal. You know, in the Quran it says, It says you're not allowed to marry your mom. It says you're not allowed to marry your sister, your auntie. Where does it say you're not allowed to marry a pretty person? I'm looking for one verse that you, you can say, you pinpoint it and say, this is where it says, Prepubescent marriage or whatever is not allowed. So if you're Quran alone, you're still towards pedophilia and a severe type of pedophilia. Severe type of pedophilia. A wife abuse. A severe type of wife abuse. Yeah, so anyway, that's what we're talking about when we talk about Muhammad Hijab. Uh, but notice that <laughs> Robert, <laughs> so Hijab there is saying, hey, according to the Quran, according to the Quran, you could have sex with a five year old. But, uh, you know, because of the hadith, we believe in waiting, uh, waiting a little longer uh, and, and you want to make sure that you're not harming the girl. What he doesn't say there is, is in the commentaries and in the legal rulings, it's you have to be careful that the girl isn't so small that you'll crush her during sex. That's what they're looking for, right? It's saying if she's kind of chubby and she got some meat on her so you won't crush her and stuff, then, then you could go ahead. And so there, there is no set uh, age, but according to hijab there, you're just waiting for something like that. Notice Daniel Hakikachu, very similar position. He says you can have sex with a four-year-old um, as long as there are signs of maturity. So these guys are actually waiting for some sort of signs of maturity, like uh, Daniel was talking about precocious puberty. So a girl who gets her period early, uh, but that's, that's, you know, that's a sign you can wait for, uh, you know, old enough to bleed, old enough to breed. That's uh, the uh, Muhammad's motto. Um, but yeah, these are the guys we're dealing with who are the, the uh, standard bearers for Islam right now. Alhamdulillah. Very, very beautiful. All right. Well, again, we don't have time to what we could always we could always do it. If the conflict keeps going on, we could always go through because I, I, uh, I look, look, look at this. He, look at this. He's saying, I hope the conflict goes on so we can do more content about this. Like, this is this is a level of you see. psychopathy. That we, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I would uh, I would like to yeah. do a show where we just go through this because, the, again, these guys are saying, oh, yeah, until Zionism came along, uh, Jews and Muslims were BFFs all along, man. We're always we're always best friends and uh, not not exactly what what I see. How about we watch a short a short video? This is Yasser Qadi, and then we'll uh, then we'll true. take some yeah. take the rest of the super chats and then uh, see what happens. But um, so this is Yasser Qadi's response to Jordan Peterson. By the way, guys, there are a ton of tweets and videos that were uh, have been blasting him. Seems organized. Hey, let's heap as much abuse on Jordan Peterson right now as we can to teach him a lesson for the future. Uh, Islam actually does a good job at this of, of using manipulation tactics to wire people against mm -hmm. uh, criticizing it. The problem, the, the weakness is they have no plan B. And so if you are the sort of person who doesn't fall for this, they've got nothing else uh, you know, apart from killing you or something like that that they can do. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out a Jordan little... Jordan Peterson has tweeted to Netanyahu, give him hell, advocating violence against the Palestinians. What is your response to Jordan Peterson? Advoc you catch that? Advocating violence <laughs> against the Palestinians. He's just... Uh, Jordan Peterson openly calling for mass murder against Palestinians, Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Sheikh Yasser Qadi, do you agree that uh, Israel should just massacre all the Palestinians as Jordan Peterson has declared? <laughs> these guys are These guys are hilarious. And the like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Hey, what did he get, LASIK? He's only had glasses on for the last 30 years. Anyway. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You got glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hatred has appeared from their tongues and the hatred that their hearts conceal is even more so. Uh, this is a person that I have been... Wait, look at this. He's he's talking about... Uh, oh, he Jordan Peterson is filled with hate. Think about this. There was an invasion. They started just massacring families and stuff and taking women captive. Peterson says, hey, give them hell. And oh, look at the, the hatred that this man has been harboring in his heart. Let's see what he says again. Appeared from their tongues and the hatred that their hearts conceal is even more so. Hey, hang on. If you're talking about hatred, I mean, <laughs> you're planning. <laughs> Why is he being so emotional? Hey, no hey, hey. All emotional. Yeah, I just wanted to point out, if you're talking about hatred, Hey, Robert, listen to what Sheikh Yasser Qadi says about me. 
when people ask him about David Wood. Who's David Wood? Let me, let, this is his response. As for David Wood, I have rarely come across somebody who is more vulgar, <laughs> vile, foul mouth, <laughs> noxious, repugnant, depraved excuse of a preacher. Whatever he is, David Wood, it is obvious to any person of faith, is not a man of God. He's a vulgar, obscene, evil jerk. That sounds uh, that sounds pretty hateful there. Man, you should you should get cards printed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that should be uh, that should be my description and like uh, yep. Twitter and YouTube and so on. That's who I am. Uh, right. uh, this is a person that I have been seeing his videos on and off. There's no doubt there's some issues that are positive, but I have always found him to be an ardent supporter of Zionism against our Palestinian brothers and sisters. And this has shown clearly from the very beginning. Uh, this recent tweet of his once again indicates that not just him, but overall so many of our politicians, so many of our pseudo philosophers, they're looking at this entire... How dare you interrupt the great Yasser Qadi? So what is going on here is every the whole world is exposed to footage of images of these uh, terrorists invading land, taking civilians out of their vehicles, out of their homes, beating them, shooting them, killing them. They are laying in the streets. Elderly people are uh, in, 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 in their own blood in the streets. Others are uh, raped carried naked for no reason apparently because of rape uh, in the back of on the back of trucks and they are celebrating people who see this get outraged at this and say this is unacceptable enough is enough deal with them now and then then the muslim scholar comes and he's like unfortunately this is very shameful that these people who react to these images would be so hateful toward uh these terrorists and this and the you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always told us that the disbelievers have hate in their heart for us I I don't know how I can possibly still sit here and be patient toward this completely dishonest display of their their inhuman barbaric two-faced vile approach to all of us while they stand there and applaud the brutal massacre of innocent people of children of elderly people of random civilians while they advocate for the killing of apostates the killing of blasphemers as we have just seen for waging war against the disbelievers for taking slaves for raping them while they are celebrating the you know the 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 the, the hostage situation and the raping of, of civilian women they stand they then sit there and are like you see, Allah always told us that the, that the disbelievers have so much hate. Unfortunately, what are we to do? Oh, my. I, I don't know why I have any kind of respect for, I don't know. I don't want to say anymore. That's a, that's a I, first. <laughs> at this entire reality from an extremely, extremely skewed narrative. How can one ignore 80 years of oppression. How can one ignore it? What about 14 centuries of oppression, uh, Sheikh Yasser? 80 years of colonization. How can one ignore 80 years of direct taking over of the lands and the peoples? People that are not even Muslim, Nelson Mandela and other. This is what is great. I mean, these, these Muslims marched out of a marched out of Arabia, went across Africa, up into Europe, conquering, 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 conquering until they were stopped and couldn't conquer. Uh, and they marched. Uh, they, they headed east all the way, India, China and so on, conquering, 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 conquering. Suddenly we get we get to this little piece of land that's like the size of a postage stamp on a on a world map. And uh, suddenly it's wrong. It's wrong. I mean, one, the way they describe it is totally wrong. But even if you grant, even if you grant it, suppose you granted that uh, there was a group there and they're the Palestinians and they've been there all along. There was never a Jew there ever. And Jews just came in and conquered it. And now Jews have this land and so on. How as a Muslim could you say that there's something morally wrong about that? Like how in the name of common sense? You couldn't. Even in, even in, even in their version of events, there would be nothing wrong with it. It's what their guys have been doing all along. Uh, absolutely insane stuff have mentioned that 
uh, the Palestinians have been treated at times worse than uh, Nelson Mandela says, and some policies worse than the South Africans were treated uh, under the apartheid regime. Cry. How can we cry. ignore cry. this reality? And then when Ooh. Palestinians attack back. How were the Jews of Kaibar treated? Ooh. What about the Jews Go of cry. Kaibar? What their oppression has been is ignored and that one attack is highlighted. So the reality is that this type of one-sided reporting and this type of narrative in which only one side is perceived as the, as the victim and the other side is completely ignored, it is about time we demolish this narrative. What an, what an irony, that's what look. they do all the time. That's what they do all the time. Mm -hmm. They always depict the, yeah. the, their side as the victims while completely I mean, this, ignoring uh, all kinds of atrocities. This Nelson Mandela business is designed to, to uh, get into the apartheid charge towards He knows Israel. what he's doing. He knows what he's and doing. The apartheid charge toward, toward charge toward Israel is 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 just a lot of hooey. Uh, the 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 black South Africans were not blowing people up or declaring that they were going to commit genocide or uh, uh, doing anything like what the Palestinians are doing. What's more, the Palestinians, the Israelis have a massive population of Muslim Arabs who are Israeli Arabs, who are full citizens, have complete equal rights, do not suffer any discrimination whatsoever. The Palestinians have to pass through checkpoints and get searched to come and work in Israel because so many of them try to kill people. And that's what Yasser Qadi, of course, is not wanting you to know. Yeah, you know I, I, well, I have to right? say, you I know? go through. Uh, yeah, uh, you you go through Jerusalem. You heard the uh, you heard the Islamic call to prayer blasting over loudspeakers and so on. Mm -hmm. You know very well, right? If if we if we sat here and gave this whole speech that Yasser Qadi is giving, uh, the Muslims would say, "Oh, cry, play the victim." <laughs> yeah. that's what they would do. Yeah, no question. And in fact, if we acted like they notice what they say, right? Notice what these guys say. Oh, Christians should be Christians aren't your, your liberal Christians. Real Christians would be obsessed with slaughtering everyone in the name of Jesus. That's what real Christians would do. OK, fine. They don't moan and wail to me because uh, according to you, my reaction should be go ahead. And, hey, cry, cry some more. Right. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, guys, just in, in case you're watching, you don't know what we're talking about. We're not saying that, she, that that's how we want to react. That's how they say we're, we're, they think that, that Christians are supposed to be exactly like Muslims and wanting to slaughter, uh, conquer the world and slaughter everyone and so on. I'm saying, OK, if we actually acted like that, like if you want us, if you think we should act like that, why do you uh, why do you play sympathy games with us? Right. Why, why are you trying to get our uh, a, a rise in sympathy out of us? Why do you do that? You're the one saying we should be massacring everyone. Yeah, right. The full picture fact of the matter is that our Palestinian brothers and sisters, their land, their lives, their peoples have been taken over for three generations. For how long will they remain oh. like this? The world has been com 14 centuries completely ignoring their plight. I have visited that land multiple times. The, the world oh. has been ignoring their plight. It seems like a, a massive focus of the world's attention. Compared to other places, there are other there are other places where you have groups that have been displaced and so on. This seems to get the bulk of the world's attention. So what? In the, yeah. eh, no one's ever heard of this. People just ignore it. Come on, dude. I've interacted yeah. with the Palestinians. Why is there a Palestinian diaspora around the world? Over 10 oh. million Palestinians are scattered around the world. Their ancestors have keys to their homes. How come nobody lo nobody looks at them? Nobody sees them. Notice the hypocrisy. I mean. Christians pour out of Muslim countries. Jews have had to flee Muslim countries. Not one doesn't care at all. Except this, uh, you can't, you can't, my goodness, this Stories. Is Nobody sees that Gaza is the largest open air prison in the world. Do you know who said this? <laughs> Our own president, Jimmy Carter of America. Jimmy Carter visited that land and Peanut said this farmer. is the largest open air prison that he has ever seen. Millions of people cramped in a small area, completely controlled by the surrounding uh, territories. Uh, quick question. Whose fault is that? I, I, I am, Robert, I am of the strong opinion that if they weren't constantly trying to slaughter Jews and wipe them off the map, I, I'm pretty sure is if, if that if that hadn't been going on for decades, I'm pretty sure Israel would say, eh, fine, yeah, fine. Oh, don't yeah, be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, you be over here. We'll be over here. That's fine. Um, yeah, you know, uh, there's a couple things that I could t uh, interject here. One is that uh, the occupation narrative completely fails when it comes to Gaza because Israel actually withdrew voluntarily from Gaza in 2005 
hoping to bring peace. And Mortimer Zuckerman, the publisher of the New York Post, spent, I believe it was $14 million, if I recall correctly, to buy greenhouses that the Israelis who lived in Gaza were operating. And he gave them to the Palestinians because he said, we want to give you this so that you will have uh, gainful employ. You will not be fighting war anymore. We're all going to be pals now. You have your own land here and you can work these greenhouses. And the Palestinians on the very first day gutted and destroyed the greenhouses, carried away everything they could carry away and converted them into Hamas weapon smuggling tunnels. And so uh, when they when he talks about it being an open air prison, yes, a lot of that is because of actually all of that is because of how the uh, Palestinians in Gaza behave. Also, it's not an open air prison. It is the largest welfare state in the world because the people there, for the most part, don't work. They just uh, devise ways to kill Israelis. And meanwhile, they are showered with billions of dollars all the time from the United Nations, the European Union, and the United States. And you can look at pictures of Gaza and their luxury malls and luxury goods, and the grocery stores are overflowing. And the idea that these people are suffering any kind of deprivation at all is a complete myth. This is so Islamophobic. It is. Come, nobody sees the conditions they're living in, the refugee camps and the squalor that is happening for millions of people. So, subhanAllah, wait, this wait. person... All... Stop it again. What? Stop the man. Refugees. Do you know something else? The United Nations classifies a refugee as somebody who flees a war zone or, or an area where his life is in danger. And so my family was refugees from the Ottoman Empire because of AP. And what <laughs> happened... <laughs> <laughs> but I am not a refugee because I was born in the United States. Now, if you were, if I were a Palestinian and my family had left when the Arab higher committee said to leave the land that is now Israel, then I would be a refugee, even though I was born in the United States. The Palestinians are the only people in the world where refugee status, according to the UN, is passed on to the children, to the grandchildren, to the great-grandchildren, and on and on and on forever. And that's so that this whole refugee gravy train with the EU and the UN and the United States giving millions to refugees and Yasser Qadi crying about refugees, it's all because it's a moneymaker for the Palestinian Arabs. And the refugee status is artificially prolonged. Not only that, but all the surrounding areas where the people were Arabs, just as Arab as the Palestinians. Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, they all, and Egypt, they refused to allow the Palestinians to settle and become citizens. They wanted to keep them refugees so that they would use the refugee status as a stick to beat Israel with. And so when he talks about them being refugees, that is an entirely sol solvable problem that has been artificially kept alive by the UN and the Muslim countries. I can say back to him, as Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ مُوتُوا بِغَيْضِكُمْ Perish in your rage. Oh, oh whoa, His look what he said and here. The He's talking to Jordan Peterson. That is happening for millions of people. So, subhanAllah, this person, all I can say back Jordan to Peterson. him, as Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ مُوتُوا بِغَيْضِكُمْ Perish wow. in your rage. His That's what Ali Dawah says. Of all of those who support apartheid, Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. will take care of them. May die Allah Azza wa Jalla protect our brothers and sisters who are oppressed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant victory to those who have been oppressed for decades and decades. May we see victory Good to luck. all of these oppressed brothers Good and luck. sisters. May Allah Good Azza wa Jalla cause us all to be instruments of khair in that region. Good luck. Uh, so look what it, look at what he just said. Uh, hey, Christ. Jordan Peterson actually says, "Hey, Netanyahu, do something about these Hamas terrorists who just went in and like slaughtered families and took a bunch of captives and so on." And then the the response, not from not from some weird fringe, you know, guy from Pakistan or something like that, from Sheikh Yasser Qadi is, "Die in your rage." Talking to Jordan Peterson. Matter of fact, my goodness, that's a good short little video there. Yasser Qadi says to Jordan Peterson, "Die in your rage." Because that's what he just said. Um, anyway, a couple super chats here. AP, this is for you. What is this? AP, uh, you remember you that you said you wish Israel was more reasonable with Jordan. What did you mean by that? 
And also, how are Christians treated in Palestine? Break it down, AP. I was more reasonable with Jordan. I don't remember saying anything like that. Well, you said it because he said you said it. <laughs> Did I say that? Or was it in reference? <laughs> okay. Like reference you'll have to I, don't, I don't remember the saying, uh, saying anything like that. I don't yeah, know. Toasted, you'll have to clarify because we, we don't know what you're talking about. Don't uh, clarify. Yeah, okay. okay. Leon says, uh, the woke and Islamist argument is that it belongs to the first people there and they are still wrong on this one on multiple levels. Yeah, so which, which one, first people? It, yeah, it would be stupid. So <laughs> it would be stupid to say if one group had this land at some point, therefore it should be returned to them. You'd have to, I mean, every what country in the world wouldn't have to change radically uh, to do something like that. And that's the point. They seem, to, on, the they seem to only apply it right here on this one point. And then the additional point is they weren't the first people. It's It's made up. So anyway. Give it back to the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs. Yeah, yes, to the them. dinosaurs had it first. You see? Yeah. Give it to yeah. T-Rex. Uh, Sid Dave says, uh, is Islam a Christian heresy? Uh, Muhammad mm -hmm. understood, misunderstood Trinity and many other Christian concepts and came up with Islam. Uh, if only some Christian could have clearly explained doctrines of Christianity to Muhammad, uh, Islam wouldn't exist. Yeah, there's actually uh, connected to the uh, heretical um, Christian views. Yeah, uh, St. John of Damascus. This, this book here is one of the first ones that mentions uh, Islam as a heresy of Christianity and a very deluded one. Uh, and that was the early view of Christianity among, uh, of, of, of Islam among Christians. Um, yeah. And yeah, there, there's a reason that Muhammad's uh, views of Jesus and so on are heretical. The emperor, I think it was Justinian, uh, expelled uh, heretics from the Roman Empire, and a bunch of them went to the Middle East. And so that's why you find sort of doctrines that are all over the place in the Quran. What is this? Empire of God. How the Byzantines saved civilization. You want to hear about Justinian? It's all here. Oh, it's gentlemen. in there. Oh, yeah. All Justinian right. and, and much more. Yeah. I don't want and, to hear about Greeks. I'm Turkish. And, yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, uh, David, you can. Uh, so, Sid, David, you you can view you can view Islam as a Christian heresy. Uh, you can, and uh, Sid, David, again, only four Muslim countries legally uh, legally allow marriage between non-Muslim men and Muslim women. Uh, forget gay marriage, legalize heterosexual interreligious marriage first. Uh, they're gonna have a problem with that because it's that well that actually comes from the Quran. Uh, Solitary Emmy says some Israeli soldier in the chat called Ethan asked for collective prayer for Israel. Do you guys interested in praying for them uh, together? Uh, Solitary Emmy, we have a uh, we have an atheist in our midst, and he tends to lose his mind whenever uh, people pray. But it is uh, on here for everyone to. Uh, I mean, you should be you should be praying. Everyone should be praying for the uh, the situation over there. Um, yeah. Last time they prayed here on this channel and I was here, I, I started uh, going up in flames. He burst into yeah. flames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Daniel Hakikachu is an undercover Mossad agent. Lol. <laughs> we should start calling him a Mossad. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is this? Uh, are Russians, even European Christians, like they have turned completed on other Europeans and allying themselves with Hamas, North Koreans? What? I don't know what's going on here. I have no idea why people keep bringing up Russia. It's a garbage. Because, it's a garbage. Because, it's a garbage country. Okay, we'll just say because, it. Because because right now there is uh, there are lots of rumors <laughs> that that Russia is in the camp with uh, Iran uh, to to cause and fuel this conflict. Uh, that's that's one of the things that are going on. Uh, Drake here says I am agnostic, but Islam makes me wonder if Satan is real. <laughs> Do you guys notice that Satan and Christianity is very similar to Allah in Islam? No two religions are more diametrically opposed. Yeah, I mean you have. In the Bible, Satan is called the father of lies. And then in the Quran, Allah is the best of deceivers and so on. And so, yeah, you do have some interesting stuff there. Uh, Scarlet there's here also, said, uh, There's also a Hadith. I'm trying to find it, but I think, oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, that uh, Muhammad says, the most despicable name to Allah on the King day of, of judgment is that of a man named King of Kings. Yeah, Jesus. So. <laughs> uh Scarlet here says, if good enough for the prophet, then good enough for Muslim men now. Disgusting model of perfect male behavior. Yes. Uh, terrible, terrible, terrible pattern of conduct. But And that's the problem. Muhammad's uh, example has the stamp of approval of Allah in Islam. Uh, Angel here says, hijab sounded like a Christian apologist there. 
what? <laughs> when when he was saying that uh, that if you only go by the Quran, then you you will end up with, you know, child. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Murder. That sounds exactly like what I would say. In fact, he, he, people don't realize how how many problems arise based on what he was saying. So hijab is saying, if you just go with the Quran, if you just go with the Quran, you would conclude that you can have sex with a five-year-old. And he says, he specifically says, if you just read the Quran, it would be halal. And he says, but we know it's haram because of what's in the Hadith, because of various things in the Hadith and various rulings of our, our legal scholars and so on. It's like, wait a minute. According to Muhammad himself, if Allah says something is halal and you listen to a man who says, no, it's haram, you have worshipped the man and associated him as a partner with Allah. So what, what hijab is saying, hey, all you guys, uh, if you are uh, true, devout Muslims, then you would conclude that, you know, you can have sex with a five-year-old. But uh, what we do is we actually commit shirk and deify human beings and we, take, we, we allow them to classify what is, uh, what is halal as haram. It's, it's amazing stuff. And they take their prophet as deity besides Allah. Shame mm -hmm. upon them. May Allah destroy them. Uh, Mr. Cranges here says AP, Dizzle, and Robert all in one room. No, we're, we're in different rooms. We're on the same, we're on the same live stream. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, Keep up the amazing work. Robert, is there a release date yet for the book? You've been through November this. 21st, Empire of God, How the Byzantines Saved Civilization. November 21st, you can order it at Amazon. Right now, you can go there and order it. Uh, Joshua here says, must be exhausting having to dismantle these degenerates and their degenerate religion all day, every day. Thanks for your work, guys. Uh, God bless. Yeah, it is. We've talked about this a bit recently, how you do you like you keep you keep pointing out the same lies over and over again for years. And you think, is this is this really worth it? No one's listening here. And then eventually, after doing it for years, something will finally collapse, like the lies about perfect preservation or the lies about the scientific miracles or now where they all admit that uh, Islam teaches child marriage and Islam teaches killing apostates. We were called 10 years ago, we were called liars for saying that stuff. Now they admit it. So it's, uh, yeah, if you look at any given period, it looks like it's not having an impact, but uh, people do catch on. You just got to be absolutely relentless for you know years what? and years. I, um, that, that reminds me of, of something that I quickly want to appreciate my wife for right now, which is uh, a, a long time ago, um, I think what once I said to her, you know what, sometimes it feels like I just uh, repeat the very same things over and over again. I talk about the very same things over and over again. And, and it kind of feels like, why am I doing this? Isn't it kind of, isn't it a bit repetitive and strange? And she said to me, no, it's, it's yeah. necessary because what you are doing is you are throwing rocks at this, this building that is, that is dangerous that you want to get rid throwing of. Throwing rocks at holding, Satan. Yeah. And slowly, <laughs> mm -hmm. and slowly making it crumble uh, mm -hmm. until it falls. You are doing you know, what is needed. And I thought, Hey, yeah, you're right. Thank you. You are stoning the great Satan. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Keep, keep in mind, everyone who, everyone who's watching you, everyone, everyone who watches the stuff, learns the stuff, shares points, shares videos. Uh, you're all, a you're all part of this as, as well. So, uh, yeah, you, we just have to be relentless because if we don't, who else is going to do it? Yeah. Um, Great here says uh, the Arab Muslim nations did not condemn Russian invasion of Ukraine. Some supported it. They are tactical anti-imperialists. Worst part, the hypocrisy. Well, you're always going to find hypocrisy. Um, knows too much said, David, isn't Allah a Zionist by the Quranic references saying Israel belongs to the Jews? How do Muslims uh, dodge it? Yeah, I mean, according, according to the Quran, uh, Allah gave Jews authority over the land of Israel problem. So if you looked at that, you'd say Allah is a Zionist. Problem is uh, Muslims now believe that uh, they have to dominate the world and subjugate everyone else and so on. So um, Wait, there's more. Oh, wait. Yeah. Well, but the Quran wait, says more. that uh, Allah gives the Jews the children of Israel, but it all, I mean, gives Jews the land of Israel. But it also says that the Jews are under a curse and are the enemies of Allah and the worst enemies of the Muslims. And then you have the key verse of 98.6, which says the unbelievers among the people of the book are the most vile of created beings. Now, what no. makes you an unbeliever among the people of the book if you don't become a, if you're a Jew or a Christian who doesn't become a Muslim? So the believers among the people of the book are the Jews and Christians who become Muslims. So they're the ones who get the land of Israel because they're not under Allah's curse. 
So you, uh, you are Robert, saying that Robert you're saying has, the Quran calls people lowest of, of creatures, words of creatures. This is this sounds like a yes. very big allegation. Um, so Robert has yeah. Robert has tried to make a coherent position out of the Quran, saying, "Okay, yes, it says Allah gave <laughs> land to the Jews, but these other passages say." Uh, Jews who reject Muhammad aren't real believers, therefore Muslims have to uh, take over and so on. Whereas me, I interpret it as just a mess. Muhammad uh, is just, you know, coming up with these things as he's going on. And he doesn't spot the problem mm -hmm. that, oh, the land belongs to Israel. And, oh, the Jews rejected me now, so I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry a river all over Arabia. Um, <laughs> okay, but there... But there is a distinction in the Quran between the believers of the people of the book and the unbelievers among the people of the book. Mm -hmm. And that's the Jews and Christians who accept Islam. So obviously, if you've got Jews and Christians who become Muslims and Jews and Christians who don't, then the Jews, a lot of the Quran starts to make more sense. And I grant you, a lot of it doesn't at all. But if you see the, the passages like, you know, the the believers among the Jews and the Christians will will enter paradise. Well, those are the ones who become Muslims. But and don't, don't so, you think don't you think the Jews are at fault, you're, though, Robert? You're, because you're still making you're still coming up with trying to come up with a coherent position, which is exactly what Muslim scholars would do and what, what Muslim scholars would say. Um, I just think it's an incoherent mess. <laughs> Like, don't, like it's, it, it's the same thing. It's the same thing in uh, in uh, in Surah five, where it's talking about uh, Allah giving the, the Jews their revelation, Allah giving the Christians their revelation, Allah giving Muslims their revelation. And Allah wants all these different religious groups because he wants it that way so they can uh, compete in good works. And then you get Surah nine. Nope. Everyone has to be subjugated. It's like to me, it just looks like Muhammad was saying what was convenient in one situation and convenient in another situation and that. Uh, yeah, so I think it's a well, actually, giant. I completely agree with you, but uh, that is the sense that it is made that is made of all that in mainstream. Yeah. Islam. That's what you'd have to if you if you actually believe this is a revelation from God, you'd have to do you'd have to do something something like that. Robert, Robert, don't you think the Jews are at fault here? Um, because and they bring it upon themselves because they worship Ezra and say Ezra is the son of Allah. Oh, absolutely. That's that's one of the things they got to give up to become a believer among the people of the book. Yeah, see, see. Uh, Even though no Jew has ever been found who said Ezra was the son of God, but they know he's out there. He's out there somewhere. Uh, Jose says, uh, Qadi's answer has holes in it. Yeah, uh, if anyone doesn't know what that's a reference to. Yasser Qadi is, uh, matter of fact, I mean, Hijab, Muhammad Hijab is the one who forced him into it. But Yasser Qadi is someone who was for a while lying and saying perfect preservation of the Quran. Behind the scenes, he was saying, no, that's a, that doesn't work. If you uh, asked him in, in, in public, if you, if you asked him in public, he would say perfect preservation. If it was behind the scenes, uh, talking to students of knowledge and so on, he would give a different answer. And then it started coming out that he didn't even think standard Muslim explanations for the differences in the Quran actually work. He got called out for it behind the scenes and exposed. And then Muhammad Hijab actually thought there was going to be something that makes sense of this. And Yasser's response was... Uh, don't talk about this in front of people because it's just gonna it's just gonna lead people astray. Stop it, and uh, that's where that we call that the infamous holes in the narrative interview because he, he said the standard narrative has holes in it. Uh, let's see, Swiss apologetics says so. Palestinians just claim to be natives for political gain, uh, like a bunch of hijab wearing Elizabeth Warrens and so on. Uh, yeah, you you can. I mean, keep in mind the people who are there are usually you know they are usually they are the descendants of people who were there before them. Uh, it's just, they, they don't really go, they don't really go back like they say they do. Uh, Gray's here. Which interpretations of Islam would you say are not harmful and are positive for society? You know, people always mention the Ahmadis in this connection. And I just got to say that every Ahmadi I have ever encountered is such a colossal jerk. And I don't understand how they can go around saying love for all and hatred for none when they are all incredible creeps. They are the rudest, nastiest people I have met. I mean, but, outside of somebody like Daniel Hakikaju or something like that, they're real jerks. And I don't understand how they can profess this love for all and I, then maintain I can. this. But every Robert, last Amadi I've met. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I've met I've met Ahmadis who are who are actually pretty nice and so on. It's uh, you can get a skewed view yeah. by who. What? That that was that Where? was Nabil's that was Where Nabil's family. Went? That was Nabil's family. They were super nice, okay. and his, and his okay. cousins. They were his cousins. They were all cool and stuff. And I've met some along the way. It's uh, the, but the 
the what the people who come at you online uh, tend to be worse than you know someone who's minding his own business and actually uh, living by the motto you know uh, love for all hatred for none and so on. But I know what you're talking about. I've seen like people just blasting at me, and I think it's like the most devout Salafi in the world. And I check his page. Ah, I follow Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. And uh, but I I think I think part of it there is because they're a minority position, they think they have to like compete for attention. And they copy mm. the methods that tend to work in Islam. And that's like lots of chest thumping and oh, I'm exposing you. Uh-huh. Uh, and you, you even see Shias, you even see Shias Nobody's acting like that. Now. And so it's like everyone's saying, oh, here's what works in our community, thumping your chest and boasting and, and insulting everyone. And so we all there's no there's no plan B. So we all just have to have to do that. Whereas, no, you, you might be better off if you um if you are actually nice and not condescending and insulting people constantly. But yeah, I don't, there are interpretations of Islam, which are less harmful. Um, I can't think of anything I'd say, Hey, this is positive and this is good. And it would be good if a bunch of people uh, became this. The, the, the Ismaili Shia are not too terrible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's what I mean. They would be, they would be mass. They would be massively better. Um, The the guy married Rita Hayworth. I mean, how bad could he be? Yeah. Uh, and to be fair to the Abdul, the Talmud is worse than the Quran. Eh, n- n- no, it's not. No, it's. Oh, no, it's we, not. we already we made a whole stream about yeah, this. But yeah. my goodness, this is now. Here's a here's a Nick Fuentes uh, moron troll here who he saw his list. <laughs> I just had to respond to one yesterday. He's like, what do you do with this list of Talmud quotes? I was like, first of all, Libra David is not a real source. It's completely made up. Do not come to me like that and act like you're. Uh, you're intelligent when you're actually citing made up sources, you giant, giant moron. Um, and uh, keep in mind, we, we, we've, we've, we've said before, there's messed up stuff in the Talmud. Uh, guys, where do you find people to, to think that this is worse when you've got actual jihadis in the world today calling for child marriage and so on actual jihadis calling for the killing of apostates and you go oh, look at this thing from libra david which is made up and <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad and you guys bro. Oh, you, the, you can't say you can come to me and say it. go ahead go ahead sorry go ahead the, the, the talmud has a lot of conversations in it yeah, yeah they don't they don't get that these said, this it's a collection. hey what about this yeah, yes. it's a collection of com- it's a collection of commentaries from rabbis, and it'll give yeah. it'll give different positions, and it will very very frequently give opposite extreme interpretations. Like it'll say, ah, mm-hmm. if someone does this, he has to die, and you'll you'll read, and then another rabbi responds to him and says, no, 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 you don't die. You treat the person with honor because of this, and they're going back and exactly. forth. But these guys will go and say, ah, oh, look, according to the Talmud, anyone who does this has to die. And no, it records a rabbi who said that and then says another rabbi said this and then says another rabbi said that. Uh, this yeah. is so in, in other words, this is not God has commanded you to go and kill this apostate. Right. So there, there is no single stupid. there is no single uh, thought of, of school in uh, school of thought. He said thought in... of school. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard it. I heard learn, the whole thing. <laughs> learn, learn a fourth language, AP. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say thought, and then I thought about uh, uh-huh. school of thought, and then I got it all wrong. But anyway, th- there is no single uh, school of thought in in Judaism or in rabbinic Judaism which says uh, that that you have to read the Talmud and take every single word in there as a command and follow it word for word. You could. There it can't would be impossible. Be, there can't be such a thing because it doesn't make any sense. It's impossible yeah. because it is full of contradictions for a thing for a purpose because they are discussing things, going through things. Yeah. You can come and say. You know, I don't like the Talmud. There is a lot of messed up stuff in there. There is uh-huh. a lot of agree. stuff I don't like. I would say, okay, I, I see where you're coming from. But if you're coming to me and saying the Talmud is just as bad as the Quran, it's even, it's even worse than the Quran. And it says yeah. this, and this is binding on all Jews. It's like, shut up. You, you don't know, you what, don't you know, don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And notice. It, it, and we are proud of that. Yeah. If you wanted. <laughs> so they basically record their rabbinic debates and so on and put it together into a, into a giant book. Just imagine if you mm-hmm. did this with like Christianity, right? You just recorded every Christian's commentary on every passage for centuries and so on. And then you went through it. Would you find people who said some really, really messed up stuff? Yeah. Uh-huh. And if you said, hey, therefore, this is what this is the position of Christianity. You, you, you I don't know. You'd sound like an idiot to me. No. Um. Uh, Chechen Democrat here says, the messenger of Allah said, I will expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and will not leave any 
but Muslim. Oh, you're taking it out of context. This is a lie. This is Islamophobic. That is an, that is an issue um, with, uh, yeah, matter of fact, I think I have that one. Here you go. Sahih Muslim. It has been narrated by Umar that he heard the messenger of Allah say, I will expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and will not leave any but Muslim. Absolutely correct. So it's weird how, uh, how he, in spite of that, in spite of Umar actually obeying Muhammad's command to expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula, there was never any problem with Jews until Zionism came along. Hmm. At least that's Makes what sense. I've heard. That's what I've heard from Makes sense. on the Dean show. Uh, Scarlet here says Nabil gets brought up. Other Muslims, oh, that wasn't real Islam. Yeah, that does happen. Uh, matter of fact, that's what that's what was funny when uh, when Rashid when Rashid uh, pointed out. He says, "Hey, you got these two billion Muslims. If you actually look, you know, once they start saying he's not a real Muslim, here's not a real Muslim. Eventually, you get down and it's that Muslim in his mosque, and he's the only one. And that is an ongoing problem. And uh, Chechen Democrat here. Any Chechen ex-Muslim here? Yes, AP. Chechen ex-Muslim. Wow, that's that's nice to see." All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, so we went through, uh, guys, the real takeaway here, one, definitely uh, Robert's um, explanation of the conflict uh, and some of the myths surrounding it. Definitely want to pay attention to that. Definitely want to get uh, uh, get Robert's book because it's just going to be an issue. It's just going to be a huge issue moving forward. And so it's good if people are actually informed. Apart from that, I mean, learn the manipulation tactics that are used because the keyboard jihadis, the Dawah guys, they use the exact same methods over and over and over again. When they try to use it on you, call them out for it. Say, do you really think I'm stupid? Oh, you insulted me. Therefore, I'm going to say what you want. Not a freaking coward, right? That has to be the response. Uh, two more super chats here. Mr. Cranger says, what hadiths do the different sects use? Uh, well, I mean, Sunni, the, the vast majority of Muslims are Sunnis. And so their Hadith collections are pretty standard. It's pretty easy to find them. Uh, but, they, you know, their main sources are, are called Sahih Sitta. That's the, the reliable six. But that's uh, uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abu Dawud, uh, Sunan An-Nasai, Jamiat Termidi, and Sunan Ibn Majah. The, those are all available on, on Sunnah.com. So uh, no problem finding those. If you're talking to Shias, they will uh, usually have some some different sources. So they'll they'll use like al kafi and so on, which, by the way, you can you can still get. But yeah, if you if you want the biggest bang for your buck, I'd go with Sunni sources because those are the ones you're going to run into most frequently. And nobody takes here, Shias sources seriously anyway. So Yeah. And uh, Shio here says, uh, what Hamas did in the streets of Israel is no different from what the Nazis and their collaborators did to the Jews in Eastern Europe, drag them out of their homes and gun them down. You, uh, you see this a lot. Allah told us that so that disbelievers have only hate in their hearts, and you see, you see, yeah. you see all the hate toward people who. Yeah, and so what would what would Yasser Qadi say to this guy? Die in your rage! Die in your rage! I'm a, I'm a rational scholar. Die in your rage! Die! 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 My goodness, man! Uh, but but so, it, it is true, though. It is true. It's very true. I mean, this is what this is. This is th these are these are pretty much Nazi uh, tactics and behaviors. But I mean, I think about this. If, even even worse at this level, I think, uh, yeah. th th than they were with the Nazis at the very beginning. And I, I would have to say, if anyone, if anyone did this, if anyone just went and say, "Hey, we're going to go massacre," you know, we're, we're going to run around massacring families and stuff like this, and taking captives and raping them and so on. You would think that this should be something that everyone's just going to condemn. But you see, again, we're not talking about some random fringe people affirming this. It seems like all the Dawah guys across the board and their their scholars across the board are all on the side, the exact same side with the guys who are uh, killing kids and uh, taking captives to rape and then hold for ransom and so on. So, yep. They're and proud of that. Uh, last one here. Thanks for your scholarship and debate. Not sure who you're talking to. I assume you're Probably talking me. to Robert if you said scholarship, because we definitely aren't getting scholarship from AP. Probably me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also, I also want to remind everyone. So we have two great authors in here. I would always advise to go and uh, you know uh, buy uh, Robert Spencer's book here, who is authoring and soon publishing a very important book. The other great author is uh, me. I write great tweets uh, and make community posts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 
Uh, all right. So, yeah, well, I'm sure we will have more to discuss and more live streams uh, unless this just, you know, just suddenly stops tomorrow. But uh, looks like you're going to have uh, ongoing conflict and you're going to have lots of Dawa guys lying about what's going on and uh, trying to approve of killing Jews and so on. So I'm sure we're going to have more to say. Dawa guys don't lie. What are you talking about? In the meantime, uh, be sure to check out uh, AP's channel. Tons of stuff there. Check out Robert's channel. We Robert and I do a show on Wednesdays on his channel called This Week in Jihad, where we keep everyone up to date. Uh, until until next time, let's go with some some great outro music here. Alhamdulillah. Go to follow an old child molester, sex offender, private pretender. Hey, go to follow an old child molester. Islam's not for me. Islam's not for me. Islam.